again, everyone. Hope you're having a good Saturday wherever you are. We may be thawing out just a bit from the ice of this week. Steve Beverly with you once again for the Union University Basketball Blitz here on the Ball Game Blitz Sports Network. And Coach Mark Campbell joins me again, and we preview another classic that you, you can look at it no other way. It's always that way when Union and Valdosta State get together. But today, again, a lot rides on the conference standings as we get into the month of February leading up to the conference tournament. Mark, let's talk about this because Thursday night you had a challenge with West Florida. Now here comes Valdosta State right behind that. Not a lot of time to be able to prepare for the league leaders in the conference. Yeah, I mean, again, I think we're real familiar with them. Um, Adi does a great job coaching her team, uh, not just on uh, details with uh, defense. I think she's a really phenomenal defensive coach. Uh, but uh, their their players have a strong mindedness about them. Uh, they're, they're probably the most strong minded team in our league that we play. And so I have a lot of respect for that. Uh, they they did a lot of things that, that made us struggle at their place earlier in the year um, during that weekend. And so uh, they exposed some things in us, and I like being exposed. I think that it gives us a chance to get better. And so I think we're a lot better than we were uh, when we played them in January or in uh, December. Mark, let's look at this. Of course, last year when you played them on this floor, uh, you got 18 down in the first half and then came from behind to win late. But this is a ball club, as you say, that they can bring out the worst in you in, in, in some instances because they do this to everybody in the conference. But looking across the board, when you play a team a second time like this, how much do you draw from your own performance in that first game to try to make the adjustments and corrections that are necessary? Oh, a lot. You know, I, I don't think she's going to change what she did against us in our previous meeting or the two meetings we had last year. I think she's doing the same things. And so uh, we just got to get better uh, playing off script. Uh, our, our players love to be told what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And they want to please, they want to do exactly like we tell them to. And, uh, good coaches are going to make you go off script. They're going to take away your plan A. They're going to take away your plan B, and they're going to make you get to a plan C. And our players have to think through those logically with poise and patience and purpose. And uh, we're getting better at that as the season's going on. And uh, as those teams expose those things, we want to get better at those things because we want to be our best at March. You don't get great at anything without being exposed, Steve. And most people avoid being exposed. But I want to be exposed. I want to be aware. I want to give that gives us all the knowledge and understanding to be prepared to execute and ultimately sports are about execution we talked to dave niven and we're going to be talking with him later about this uh when we preview the men's game about distractions at this time of year he says they're going to happen you know they're going to happen how do you help your team to try to not focus on distractions that occur as they come down the stretch run of this conference race? Yeah, I think that, you know, I think distractions are basically um, us knowing and being aware of our weaknesses. Um, being aware of yourself, pretty important, Steve. Um, you have bad breath, it might, I mean, that you might want to know about that. It's going to be offensive to other people. <laughs> but, uh, and I'm, that's a joke, but at the same time, it's true. We better know ourselves well. And we talk about this all year long and you better have a desire to attack weakness. And if you attack weakness, you'll find your strength in small details that are within moments instead of concentrating on a big thing that provides weight. And if we just know that we're trying to win small battles of uh, details and those details become habits and those habits provide the foundation for execution, then the distractions are things individually that you have been working on all year long based on your weaknesses. And so everybody has different ones. Um, and we want to provide them with the enough information they can use their strengths to glorify God. They can also use their weaknesses the way they attack them uh, to bring glory as well. Got less than a minute. Keys to this afternoon's game against Valdosta State for your team. Yeah, offensive execution. We got to make shots. And uh, I think we're going to have a chance to execute at a high level. Uh, and then, like I said, before the West Florida game, a commitment to the press. 
Uh, we we had uh, Valdosta had 28 turnovers against us last time, and West Florida had 24. We want to be committed to the press, and uh, we did a good job of that the other night. We're going to do a good job of it tonight. The man says it. Now let's see it happen. We're about to go down to the floor and see how the Lady Bulldogs tackle it against Valdosta State. Mark, wish you a lot of good luck today, and we'll be talking to you after the game. Thanks, Steve. All right, so let's go down to the floor and give you the starting lineups for today's game between the Union Lady Bulldogs and Valdosta State. And here are your starters for DeAndra Shermer's Valdosta State Blazers. Jaira Ards, she averages eight a game. She's from Eufaula, Alabama. Emma Martin, she is a 5'11 junior from Richfield, Utah. The engineer of this whole train, Taylor Searcy, she leads in scoring and rebounding. Taylor is from Lincoln, Nebraska. She's a sophomore, only 5'7", but she does everything. Lily Long is a junior from Melbourne, Australia, one of two Australians on this Valdosta State team, and Kate Tanner. She is a sophomore also from Melbourne, Australia. Now let's flip over to the Lady Bulldogs, and it's the usual five. The Lucas sisters from Papua New Guinea and also Thailand. Samaria Bug Thompson, she had herself a fine game this past Thursday night against West Florida from Dyersburg. Bethany Dillard, who had 16 in the game, just ripping the threes up everywhere on Thursday night. And, of course, Bethany from Maumelle, Arkansas. And Naomi Van Ness, the Dorchester English native, but also is one who's lived over here in the States for about the last 13 years. Those are Mark Campbell's Lady Bulldogs. I'm going to head down to the floor for the Star Spangled Banner, and then we'll be back up here to start this afternoon's big game.
Those are your starters for Valdosta State. Now here are the Lady Bulldogs. Shanique Lucas. And if you look for an engineer on the train for this ball club, that's her right there. And Kasharna Lucas, her sister, who is a freshman. Here's the bug, Samaria Thompson from Dyersburg, averaging 11 and a half a game. Shanique leading in both scoring and rebounding. Bethany Dillard averaging nearly nine a game. Had that big 16-point performance on Thursday night. And Naomi Van Ness. She's averaging 6.4 a game. She's blocked 11 shots during the season. She had a couple of them on Thursday night. Mark Campbell talked about how the key once again for this game as it was Thursday night to trust the all-court press, not to vary from the basic game plan. But the other key thing is not to commit excessive turnovers. These two teams, when they met, when Valdosta State won down in South Georgia, 60-54, to 54, both these teams together made 49 turnovers. 28 of them were by Valdosta State, 21 by Union. But VSU came up with a lot more points off turnovers, and that's one of the key things is to try to keep them from making mistakes. Naomi Van S is going to jump this one. And Lady Bulldogs with it. They got out to such a hot start and were just never even threatened by an exceedingly tough West Florida team. They tried to go inside to Van S, and they're saying that it was off of Naomi's fingertips, so Union with the first turnover of the game. And Union is going to stay in that all-court press all game long. This Valdosta State team averages 20 points off turnover, so you make a mistake, you're usually going to pay for it. They love to get that ball into Taylor Searcy every opportunity they can. And flipping one up was Tamaya Francis. That one just went nowhere. That was actually Gyra Ards. And there you go, right down the lane, Shanique Lucas. So no harm from that first turnover in Union with the first score. And back into that with three guards up front. Issuing pressure. So they call this first play and trying to beat everybody down the floor and so excessively quick in drawing the foul. That one is going to be on Kasharna Lucas. Glad to have all of you aboard, whether you're a Union or Valdosta State fan watching on our streaming network this afternoon. It's so good to have you here. Aunts, uncles, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, brothers and sisters, and anybody else who's a close friend. We are cousins. We are so glad to have you with us today. I know you're proud of all of these young ladies for both schools. Full disclosure, as the second free throw goes through for Cersei, full disclosure, I've been broadcasting union games for 28 years, but also I went my first two years of college to Valdosta State. So I do have a connection between both schools. They tried to get it to Van Ness, and she saved it. That pass was way too long. This team will change up on you. They'll go man-to-man, -man, but then they will slick you with a zone. Turnaround is there, and they're going to need Shanique to be hot. She sat down for a lot of the first half with two early fouls against West Florida. And I'll set up where the conference standings are as we get into this game. But this is critical for both teams as far as where in just a few weeks that one tried to go to the inside and it was just too far away. And so that's your first turnover for the Blazers. I, I attended Valdosta State so long ago that I was actually there when the nickname Blazers was adopted. How about that? Under eight minutes. Keely Robinson in there replacing Van Ness. And again, tipped away by Ards. Union will have 14 on the shot clock with a 4-1 to lead. So Bug Thompson will toss this one in. 
Bug had the first nine points for Union Thursday night, and it was shots like that. She had three threes in the first quarter, and that one was tipped away. It'll go back to the Blazers, and so Bug makes it a 7-1 to game. Both of these teams seem to be so focused on this one, a tremendous amount of respect for each other. I got to visit with a couple of the Valdosta State players beforehand, and they said, you know, we're on a mission that we want to repeat as champions, and, of course, this is a team as Cersei takes it all the way in. This is a Valdosta State team that they were your NCAA South Regional Champions last year, won that title on this very floor in the championship game against Union. And they were so well prepared. Big long bomb. Bank shot three. That is your Bank of Jackson three. Oh, my goodness. Bug Thompson with the same kind of start that she had Thursday night. I guarantee you she did not rehearse it that way. She does not practice. And there's a steal. This one could go all the way. Bug with the fake. She goes to the hard deck, and she will have two shots. So, again, forcing turnovers and then capitalizing off of them. And already replacements coming in. Leah Church checks in. And Lauren West, our player of the game. You're going to meet Lauren up close and personal during halftime of our men's game today. It's a fun interview. And I found out some things about her that I think I I didn't really know. Bugs got her free throw pursuing percentage up to 71 now and she's getting more and more reliable from the line and the senior hits them both union up 12 to 3 bugs going to check out for a bit and coming in is leah cobble for union and they're staying in that press and good job of beating it down the floor Cersei's the one that they're going to have to have a big game on, and that's going to be on Keeley Robinson. Keeley was moving in reverse with her. That's not going to be a shooting foul, at least unless we're surprised by that. Mark Campbell will probably put about 5,000 paces on his pedometer during the course of this game. And a foul before the throw-in on Leah Cobble. They said she pushed off a bit. Now, Leah, you wouldn't do such a thing like that. (laughs) Her folks are here today, and so are Lauren West's. Lauren's dad is pretty easy to find because he's 6'9". Shot off to the right, and it is Lucas, who is the leading rebounder for this team as a guard. But she is after every loose ball. She is after every rebound. Leah had some really hot games in January from behind the arc. Down to 10 on the shot clock. And Lucas has it to rim off. She had a good look at it, but it went astray. Here they go, scrambling for it. Knocked away by Union, but the Blazers will play it with 22 on the shot clock. Shiley Morrison comes in to give Shanique Lucas a rest. This has been Mark Campbell's strategy all year long is to substitute religiously and frequently to keep them fresh for this all-court pressure. And most of the time, it has worked. Oh, somebody is open over on the left-hand side, but it was well short. And the rebound to Morrison. And big bomb for, yes, ma'am, Lauren West picking up where she left off with the 20 points on Thursday night in Union to an early 15-3 lead. And that one's too high, and it goes right into the hands of Union. Third turnover for the Blazers. I wouldn't call Valdosta State rattled right now. It's just that Union is playing on all cylinders, and that press is creating some difficulty. Morrison lost it. And that is going to be charged, I have every reason to believe, as she is on the deck. That is going to be on Keeley Robinson, and that is her second already. And we're not even five minutes into this first quarter. And Valdosta State sends in 
three substitutions. Coming into this one, Lady Blazers 17 and 3 overall, Union 15 and 3. Valdosta State atop the league standings by one game over Lee and a game and a half over Union. Union in third place. Down to 20 on the shot clock. And that one's lobbed inside. Nice job of recovering. This is going to be one of those back-to-the-basket opportunities, and it does not go. And they're going to take their time again. We haven't even reached the first media timeout. Tell you, Leah Church thought about going for it, but st- instead, Iron was unkind for Shiley Morrison. And Union picking them up because Sharna Lucas giving some intense defensive pressure and almost getting the steal. Now, are they going to call that one on Keisha? Yep. Said she was a little bit too aggressive, so Union has already committed three fouls in this first quarter. Make that four with that one on Keisha. Keely Morrison has, uh, pardon me, Keely Robinson has two of them. Now we're going to take our first media timeout. So far, it's been all Lady Bulldogs. They're on top of Valdosta State, 15 to three. Back right after we pause for the cause. The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios. With over 750,000 views in 2022, we are where you need to advertise. Please subscribe to our Worthy Road Studios YouTube channel and join the other 4,000 subscribers watching local sports, including Union University, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, and Peabody. Our multi-camera broadcasts include slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios, the premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. Last month, Mark Campbell eclipsed the 700 victory threshold in what has been a storied career. And I can tell you, back when he was hired by David Blackstock to succeed him as the head coach of the Lady Bulldogs, he saw something in Mark as an assistant coach, as a recruiter for the men's program here that he felt like was the right spark and there were applications or inquiries that came in from all over America, but David felt like Mark was the right hire, and boy, was he ever. And has become a legend in his own right. Now passing more than 700 victories and doing it faster than any college basketball coach at any level. So that is the 15 foul on Union. So going to the line, it is going to be Jaira Ards. And remember, no more one and one. Once we went to the quarter situation, no more one and one. So everything is a two-shot foul once you get into the bonus. Ards, a 69% free throw shooter, and delivers them both. That cuts the lead to 10. And they've got West down low playing the post. They go to the corner. And West is open and got it and the foul. She is playing with a mission. That's five for Lauren of Union 17. And she's got a chance at a three-point play. She made every single free throw on Thursday night, the 5'11 nursing student. But you're going to enjoy the interview to find out one area of medicine that she has really seriously considered and has not given up on. It's the kind of medical career that could lead her to have her own television show. I'll just let you have that as a clue. Now, it's going to be one-on-one against Lucas. And that one was too low, just way too far outside to get one of those curl bank shots. It is Lucas. It is not there. And back down the floor comes Ard. She is double teamed, has all kinds of problems getting it through. But wide open underneath and the foul. And that was one of those that I think unquestionably Bethany Dillard wishes she had back because she was beaten underneath and then in an attempt to salvage it, committed the foul. So that is going to send Lily Long to the free throw line. 
80% free throw shooter, so you can rest assured she's more than likely to develop this three-pointer. In and out. Oh, my goodness. They're going to say it was announcer's jinx, and believe me, it was not intended. West is working. They're going to a bit of a what you might call right now a 2-1-2 zone. And West put it up too. She was just too far down underneath and hit the end of the glass. Not in a good position to set up for a jump shot. And double teaming very quickly and going for the bomb. No, short. Valdosta State has missed both of its three pointers. Shanique is so fast. I mean, she is Miss Lightning. We're under three minutes here in the first quarter. Union up 18 to 7. Largest lead was 13 at 18 to 5. Now down to seven. Bug's going to have to do something fast and does and overshoots it. Curls it up too high. This is going to be a three on two situation. They do have numbers, but they put it back outside to Cersei. Jordan trying to find somebody open. They would love to get somebody down low underneath, and they almost did, but she was picked up by Bethany Dillard. Right down the middle, and again, overshooting the layup, and the foul is from behind. That foul is charged to Alicia Curry, the six-footer from Lehigh Acres, Florida. She's transfer from Santa Fe Junior College. There's some great junior college programs in North Florida that a lot of people have played for over the years and have moved up into varsity in either Division I or Division II. Dillard was picked up very quickly, and that pass had no authority on it whatsoever. They got a two-on-one here, and trap double dribbling. Ards, apparently they say that she picked it up and then... Went again. I didn't see it, but the official did. He was right on top of it. Leah Church coming back in for Dillard. So Union picks up the fourth turnover for Valdosta State. Blazer shooting two out of nine from the floor for 22%. Union six out of 11 for 55. Lady Bulldogs out rebounding the Blazers seven to five. Leah puts up a three. Got it. Well, mom and dad have to be happy about that. A 21-7 union lead in the first quarter. At least early, this is looking like the West Florida game did, and I think that's going to be on Bug Thompson. That's her first. And that they are in the bonus, so they will go to the line for two. Shiley Morrison comes back in for Bug. I have never asked Samaria where the nickname Bug comes from, so we need to get her on an interview before the season's over, and we got time out. So, a minute 15 to go. Union up 21-7 over Valdosta State. We realize you have a busy lifestyle, and at the Bank of Jackson, we're here to help you fulfill all of your financial needs, personal and business loans, mortgages, online banking and bill pay, and so much more. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Back we are, and Deandra Shermer, the one thing that we noticed about her last year during the playoffs and the South Regionals is that her team gets behind she does everything possible to keep them calm and focused when they're in timeout situations. And that's exactly, and she is a, a huge student of what's going on. She makes adjustments as the game progresses. That one rims off. This Valdosta State team is shooting 74% for the season. But right now, they are three out of six from the line. This is Nelson and misses them both. Boy, I'm t- 
<laughs> I don't know if you noticed that, but Leah Cobble was doing a bit of holding there underneath to keep <laughs> a VSU player from getting the rebound. Underneath the Van Est. The high lob, and they need as many of those as they can get. And Union is up 23-7 to with a minute remaining here in the first quarter. And they work against Van Est, and that one was too strong. And Lucas the rebound. Shanique will slow it up, but open. Nope, didn't try to take it. She went down the lane, and that was one where I think maybe Shiley would have been better versed to take it herself. All of a sudden, she had three defenders piling up on her, so that's the fourth turnover for the Lady Bulldogs. Union's picked up eight points off of the mistakes and wide open for a three. It is Iron Unkind and Van Ness with a rebound. Will Union play it for the final shot? I think they will. Now, we've seen mixed degrees of success on this. We had one game recently in which all three opportunities at a final shot failed. All right, Shanique has got to do it quick. They're under five, and she goes to the deck. They're not going to be able to get a shot off. So that one failed again, but Union... 16 ahead at the end of the first quarter, 23-7. to We'll have the second stanza right after we dash for the cash. Championship DNA. That's what you find in Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way? Peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. Well, this is, I think, once again, a shock to the system that Union is up 23-7 to over this league-leading Valdosta State team in the Gulf South Conference. Now, don't be deceived because they're very capable of wiping out that deficit in a hurry. But Mark Campbell told us, he said, that if we play as we did Thursday night, We really believe good things will happen. And his goal all the way since we started back in November was to have this team to gel at this time of year. Well, if Thursday night was any example, they're on the money with that. But they still have this one to navigate. They've got a road trip down to Lee University that is going to be crucial. They'll come back home. They'll be on the road next weekend. And they'll be down at Auburn Montgomery on Thursday night at Montevallo on Saturday. Then they're back here for a doubleheader on Thursday and Saturday, the 16th and 18th, Alabama Huntsville and West Alabama. And then they go on the road against Lee and Shorter, and the Lee game will be crucial. Union could still, with a victory here and a victory over Lee, could end up as the number one seed in the conference tournament. And there is Leah Church with a steal. She was tripped, but no call. And everybody is going to the deck, and losing that one out of bounds is Ards, and so that's turnover number five for the Blazers. And here we go. Valdosta State has one of the prettiest campuses anywhere around. they got those gorgeous palm trees, and the architecture is so outstanding. And Bug thought about it. 13 on the shot clock. Now they're going to have to really struggle and hustle to get one in there. Down to five. They got to hurry. Bug puts it up. No, not there. VSU high up for the rebound. And Nelson finally kicks it outside and setting up the play is going to be Cersei. She had a three-pointer in the first quarter. She's averaging 12 a game and puts it up high and draws the foul. This is one thing that you have seen from this Valdosta State team. They attack the basket in the hope that they will get fouls, and they did, and they drew five of them, actually seven, 
in the first quarter, and Mark Campbell is making substitutions from, I think, everybody in the next county. You see that all during the game, that uh, the exchanges are just plentiful and multiple. Here's Taylor Searcy. In and out, my goodness gracious. She's an 87% free throw shooter. That rarely happens to her that she drops one out at this stage of the game. They're three out of seven from the free throw line. Gets the second one to make it a 23-8 to eight game. Mark says protecting the basketball, not making careless or really mindless passes. And he says sometimes we get just in too big of a hurry and we'll do things like that. Big, long bomb. Now, we knew that was short. She was really and quickly getting it back for the offensive rebound, Shiley Morrison. It is Lauren West. Oh, just short. And here they go. They got a two-on-one. Now they pick them up. Going to take their time and go to the inside. Big bomb. Just caroms off. And reverse layup is not there. Third opportunity at the basket finally goes through. Emma Martin with her first basket of the afternoon. 23-10. to 10. So Valdosta State gets the first three of this second quarter. Bug. Fires one way too far right. And there's going to be a scramble. And it looks like they're going to go back to Union with it. Nope. It goes the other way. And Morrison will check out. And Keeley Robinson, who's playing with two fouls, will come in. Keeley and Kasharna Lucas both have two. Valdosta State has only committed three fouls in the entire contest, and so Cersei will toss it in. And she has got all kinds of people in her face. Union backs off to a two-woman press. Seven and a half to go. You take a look at the talent that Deandra Shermer has developed all through her tenure at Valdosta State. And right in the middle... Robinson knocks it away. Eight on the shot clock. And Union invites the three. And the lead has been cut from 16 down to 10. You saw Deandra. She is just really encouraging her team because they're not worried about that. And turnover. This is the kind of thing that Union, they're not going to stop this one. All the way down for the layup for Searcy. Taylor with six now. And all of a sudden, that 23-7 to lead is evaporating. Remember what I told you. The screen is there, and Dillard cannot get it. Union with a lot of one-shot possessions to open up this second quarter. That curl attempt for a layup, and she wanted a foul, but it wasn't there. And there you go. Little Miss Lightning flies it all the way through. 25-15, to and maybe that will settle down the Lady Bulldogs a bit. They just went to sleep and let Shanique come up with that one. She's got six. Bug Thompson is the leader with eight. You cannot invite this Valdosta State team to put up a three and give them time to set just like that one. It was short. But they were right back there for the offensive rebound. Now now watch how they direct the traffic. 12 on the shot clock. They've got them spread out. And nobody came to pick up. Long, pardon me, that was Tanner, her first three. Nobody came to pick her up. So that 16-point lead is down to seven, and we haven't even played half of this second quarter. Keely Robinson, left-hander, got it. Excellent one-on-one play for Keely for her first basket. And it's back to a nine-point lead for Union. That's going to be all speed and all layout. Absolutely for Ards. That's something you have to be very careful because she has bullet speed. 27 to 20. 
Union has only had four points in this second quarter. Valdosta State has picked up 13. As they say, you just have to chip away at it. And Shanique was off balance. Not there, and a chance to close the lead down to four. And Union's defense has been playing a bit soft. Almost stolen, and it is. Knocked away. Lauren West right there for the steal. She had three of them on Thursday night, and timeout is called. 4.22 remaining, and Union on top. 27-20. Back with more after we scoot for the loop. Are you looking for a Christian college or starting the college search process? I want to take a second to tell you about my school, Union University in Jackson, Tennessee. Union is a private four-year university known for its rigorous academics, Christ-centered community, and the success of its graduates. My favorite part about Union is the faculty. The professors here are so intentional about helping students grow not only academically, but also spiritually. You should check out Union for yourself. Come for a visit. I know you'll love it. At Union University, you'll be transformed. This was Union University's 200th anniversary week. The Founders Day Chapel yesterday was the observance of that, and we're going to bring you select highlights of that in between games as Union is winding up its bicentennial celebration here, and it was a marvelous day. You had interviews with two of the previous presidents before Dub Oliver. Those, of course, were Hiron Barefoot and... David Dockery, and you'll hear from Dr. Barefoot during the course of our highlights on this and also how it was celebrated in the chapel yesterday. Well, Deandra Shermer, as I mentioned, she has a talent for keeping her team focused even when they get down by big double-digit margins, which they did at 23-7 at the end of the first quarter. And they came out... I hate to use a parody on their name, but they came out ablaze here in the second quarter. And they've had a 13-4 run. And Union has made some mistakes that and has had to rush some one-shot possessions. And a lot of that is because of the Valdosta State defense. They're still playing somewhat of a 2-3 zone. And Union having a hard time finding an opening. Shanique Lucas with six on the shot clock. She's going to have to do something again herself. Puts up a a prayer that doesn't go, and you had two players scrambling for it, and unfortunately Union will lose possession. Shanique and Keely Robinson were both going after it, and the collision knocked the ball out of bounds, so it is going to be blazer ball. And once again, you're looking at a Union team and almost stolen, and it is. I was about to say something that I would have had to take back. There you go. Leah Church from outside. That's her second three of the afternoon. Union 5 out of 12 for 42% from behind the arc. And here goes another steal. Leah's got it again, and they say that it was off her foot. No, they have charged the foul. Pardon me. The foul, trying to get it back, has been charged to Shanice Nelson. She is the 5'8 senior from Nashville. Went to Chattanooga State Community College and now has made her way down to Valdosta. A city known as Titletown, USA, for all of the many state championships that both Valdosta High and Lowndes County High have won in football and of course in basketball, women's basketball and men's basketball. They've been a power for many, many years. 3.20 to go, 10 on the shot clock for Union. Bug has very little time to create here. They're trying to get a screen and she's got to put up one fast and lost it. And you can see Mark Campbell shaking his head below us. Curl layup is there and the foul. That's why she is Taylor Searcy and why we call her the engineer of this Valdosta State train. Because just one single play like that can put this team back in to within seven. And she's always got a smile on her face, just such a talented player. 
Taylor from Lincoln, Nebraska. Went to Lincoln East High School. She's just a sophomore. And again, this has not been her day from the free throw line. I'm telling you, she is 87% from the line, and they're just not dropping today. All right, Thompson, the key thing she can't get into is to be holding this ball 10 seconds in a possession. Now they're down to eight. (coughs) Bug is fouled on the backside as she went in between two defenders. And the foul is charged to Jordan. India Jordan, who is from Rochester, New York, went to the School of the Arts, a 5'7 sophomore. Naomi Van Ness checks back in, as does Lauren West. So Bug goes to the line for two. She's Union's leading scorer with eight. Her season's average is 11 and a half. Nails it. She's been working on those free throws because she struggled a lot before Christmas. This would make it back to a 10-point margin, and that was pushed just a little bit too much. And Lauren West off her hands, and it goes back to the Blazers. And Deandra Shermer is motioning in particular for Nelson to get back down the floor. Cersei is just so calm and collected at any given time on the floor in running this offense. 13 on the shot clock and the jumper. Nope, off the mark. And here comes Morrison with it. Jordan had a good look at it, but it just went a little too far right. Tipped away, and so Union will play it again with 24 on the clock. And Dillard and Shanique Lucas and... Leah Cobble will all come in. Mark has shuttled in and out all season long, about every two to three minutes, getting at least two to three fresh players in, sometimes an entire unit. Now, Shanique Lucas will probably play in longer than anybody. Here goes a drive by Cobble. Van S was in all kind of trouble. There you go again. Boy, has she found her shooting hand Lauren West with nine. All of them have been three-pointers today. And Union back to the 12-point margin and offensive foul. That'll be turnover number nine on the Blazers. Union has picked up 11 points off uh, Valdosta State's mistakes. So Union just very slowly has been grinding its way back to extending this lead once again that in the first quarter was 23-7 to seven underneath. Unfortunately, Naomi was too far down underneath. Turn around. Iron unkind. Van Est is fouled. That's where being 6-6 is such a huge bonus for the Lady Bulldogs. And checking back into the game now is Tanner. Naomi is not the highest percentage free throw shooter on the season, 49%. So you figure if you can get one out of two, you're happy. The line drive is there. So Nay delivers. Can we get two Nays out of this one? Indeed, we did. 36-22, Union back in the press again. Now Van Ness is going to have to pick her up down the court. Beautiful job of defending by Leah Cobble to break up what looked like a sure layup for Valdosta State. There you go, all the way down, and the foul. The bank didn't go, but the foul is going to be on Ards. That will be her second. Alicia Curry already has three for the Blazers. And Union has Church, Robinson, and Kisharna Lucas with two. So here goes Shanique on the season, 88% from the line. And just as I say that, you saw what happened. Saw both 
Lucas Sisters last night at the University School of Jackson game. 37 to 22. Their dad was with them. We're getting down to the final minute of this first quarter, and this is where defense is a huge key late in the quarter. You don't want to give up. If you're a Union fan, you don't want to give up suddenly four to five points and right through a triangle there, and traveling is called on Cersei. She went to the deck. And again, Union's and DeAndre Shermer did not like that call. Union cannot play for a final shot, but I'm sure they're going to take their time unless they get a clean look at one. Now, Naomi is not going to shoot a three, and that one was just one where it was ill-timed. She was trying to dish off to West, and the exchange was just not there. Mark Campbell screaming defensive instructions. Way too high off the glass. West the rebound, and Union will play it for the final shot. The lead had been sliced as low as 7 in this quarter. Now it's back to 15. If they get a basket here, it would be their largest lead of the game. 7 on the clock. And the jumper. Not quite there. Van S is fouled right before the horn. That offensive rebound for Naomi Van Ness. So Nay goes to the line for two. Now, I think the question is they're going to come over and see if there is a slither of a second left on the clock when Naomi got it. She did put it up before the buzzer went off, but they're going to try to determine is this going to be one that is shot with nobody at the line because the half was over. Well, this has been a solid comeback for Union here after early on in this quarter. The 16-point lead was sliced down to seven. And it was on three different occasions. But then Union has gradually worked its way back in. And you've got six different Lady Bulldogs who have scored in this game. The game's leader is Taylor Searcy with 11. And that's no surprise for me. But her average is 12 a game. So she's almost hit that right off the bat in the first half. And... So let's see what the officials say. Is there anything like just a three or four tenths of a second at this point? But Naomi will have an opportunity at two regardless. The only question is, will you have people on the line or will you have them if they say it's going to be with no time on the clock? So the official comes over and signals. Come on down. I think there's going to be one-tenth of a second remaining. So Naomi goes to the line, and even if she only makes one out of two, as Buster Bulldog visits with the fans once again, even if she only gets one out of two, Union will have match cards with the Blazers here in the second quarter. They put one full second on the clock. It'd be almost impossible to get a rebound and toss it all the way down the floor. How about that? She's three for three today. This would give Union its largest lead of the contest. And she does. 39 to 22, and they're going to bring at least two players back to keep this from being somewhat of a home run pass. Yeah, they knew they're not going to get that one in. So how about that? After struggling in the first four minutes of the quarter, Union actually ended up outscoring Valdosta State 16-15 and leads at halftime 39-22. Let me quickly run through your scoring totals here. Taylor Searcy is the leader for Valdosta State with 11. She's got four rebounds as well for Union. Lauren West, a hot hand continues with nine, as well as nine for Samaria Thompson, six each for Leah Church, and for Naomi Van Ness, seven for Shanique Lucas. So balance scoring all the way across as Union does lead it, 39-22. to It's time now for us to go to our halftime feature, and that, of course, is the Bulldog preview with Coach David Niven 
And today he's going to set you up for what could be a very interesting men's game between the Bulldogs and the Blazers. So here we go. Well, it's halftime here at Union against Valdosta State, the women's game, and it's time for us for our periodic visit with Coach Dave Nitton to preview the men's game. And, Dave, before we get into today's game, let's look a little bit back at Thursday night. It's not an easy one, I know, for you as a coach and for the players to look at. Uh, this was a tale of two halves. Uh, you were trailing by two at halftime, and then all of a sudden it seemed as though every single thing that uh, the West Florida team put up was going in in the first eight minutes of the second half. From your vantage point, what turned the tide of that game? Oh, I thought I thought foul trouble hurt us quite a bit in the first half. Um, took any kind of momentum that we had. Uh, we were fortunate to be down two at the half. Um, was hopeful that uh, we had weathered the storm of of putting three starters on the bench and uh, um, could could overcome that in the second half. Um, we had fresh bodies out there in the second half, and uh, you know I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. It's not <clears throat> it's not available just yet, but. Uh, uh, I'll be surprised. I, I know there were some defensive mistakes on our part that led to some some of their uh, baskets, but uh, I think they made some tough shots during that stretch as well. And, uh, you know, it, it was their best game of the year. Um, they shot at an extremely high level. Uh, and, uh, you know, we weren't able to overcome that. So um, just uh, just an, an, an inability um, – to get stops, uh, as, as man, I, I thought our guys played really, really hard, especially after we got down. Um, we were down 18 at one point and, uh, and cut it to six with a lot of time left. Um, but, uh, but turnovers continue to be a problem for us. Um, you know, 16 turnovers is, is far too many, uh, in a game when we are shooting it relatively well, uh, and uh, and just our inability to, to get stops. They they like I said, they shot it at a really really high level. It was it was by far their best game of the season. And uh, um, you know, one of those things we've got to we've got to bounce back that quick. <clears throat> yeah, that that was really when you stop and think about it from every stretch of the imagination. Uh, this was one of those games where you simply had a team that played above what its stat line shows across the board because it's a team that shoots 32% from threes, and they were 50-plus, and particularly in the second half. It's just it's one of those that's almost unstoppable when a team is putting it together like that. Well, you have to wipe that out of the memory banks and get focused on Valdosta State, another team that you had success against on the road. Uh, they'll be coming in here because the two of you are a half game apart in the conference standings, and there's still plenty of time and plenty of opportunities uh, to be able to get a home game in a conference tournament. Uh, tell us first off from your first meeting what Valdosta State brings to the table. Oh, this is a team probably unlike anybody in our league, um, just at the pace that they play. Uh, really fast transition defense is going to be a key for us. Um, we'll have to be better than we were yesterday. Uh, Valdosta, you know, presents many of the same problems uh, that West Florida gave us last night. Uh, they just do it better. Um, you know, they are they are much more likely of a team if, if you're looking at the weekend uh, as a whole. You're much more likely of a team to. to to shoot it at a high level and 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 really get it going the way West Florida did last night, um, and so we'll be challenged for sure um, to guard them. They they, they are um, really really explosive. We've got a lot of guys that can that can shoot it and score. Uh, they made 13 threes last night at Christian Brothers um, from a number of different guys, and uh, so so you know our strength all season has been our, our defense and. Uh, We've got to prove that that's 
who we are. Uh, you know, that last night was, uh, was not something that is, uh, normal or who we are, that that was an outlier. And, uh, um, it'll be really important that we can, we can defend at a much higher level uh, on Saturday. If you, if you look at your vantage point from all of this and you have one that <clears throat> if you look out away last night or Thursday night, how difficult for players is it in for you as coaches to help them? Okay. That's done. It's over. We can't go back and reflect too much on this because we've got one coming up in another day. And yeah, they'll be fine. And, and that's that's huge. When you get into a situation like that, how difficult is it to get them to wipe that off their memory banks about Thursday night and, and just focus ahead on Saturday? Yeah, I think they'll be fine. We 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 we've uh, we've responded pretty well this season um, after after difficult losses, and uh, I, I think our guys will be ready to play. I I, I do think you'll see uh, better defense from us on on Saturday. Um, and you know, I mean, I, I think it's going to be a really difficult game. Um, I think it'll come down to the very end. Uh, it'll be within a couple of possessions, would be my guess. And, uh, um, you know, we're, we're going to have to play better, uh, on both sides of the ball. Um, we've got to take care of it better offensively and, and we've certainly got to defend better. Uh, but, uh, but I, I think, you know, I'm thankful that we get to play quick. It's a quick turnaround. Um, you know, today's practice will, will be really good. I believe, uh, we'll have their attention. We'll watch film before practice and, and correct some things. And, and I, I do think, I think we'll play better uh, on Saturday. I, I'd be, I'd be really surprised if we didn't. When you watch tape back the day after a, a game, such as what you had Thursday night, when you watch tape back, what are the kind of things that you and the assistants are really pointing out to these players and and looking at to try to get the performance better the next time out. What do you what do you look at? Oh, you look for you look for good and bad. Um, I think the things that that the the bad things you're looking for are things that are correctable. Um, you know, a mistake that was made. Uh, a lot of it will be communication errors. Like we can fix that. We can we can we can talk louder. We can talk more. Um, we can talk earlier. Uh, so <clears throat> there'll be things, there'll be things of that nature, particularly on the defensive side of things that that'll be the primary focus of, of today's film, uh, will be mistakes made. Um, there may be some, some, some possessions defensively where we show them, Hey, you played really good defense here. You contested this shot and they made a tough shot and we live with that. Like most nights teams are not able to make enough tough ones to beat you. I haven't seen last night's yet, so I don't know. I, I, I'd be surprised if uh, if they beat us just with tough shots. I, I know they made some tough shots. Uh, I know they shot at really high level. My guess is there's enough mistakes that we made. I, I can think of three just right now off the top of my head where we went under screens that we should have chased a guy over the screen, and, and we gave him a three. Uh, that's nine points right there. So that's, that's enough in a six-point game uh, to identify, hey – you know, it wasn't just they played out of their minds. We made enough mistakes to to get beat. Um, the other thing you look for on the positive side are things that that we want to repeat. Uh, maybe it's a, a, something we've emphasized in practice that uh, that we carried over into a game, and and uh, and it and it's something that we want to encourage. So positive reinforcement there of showing them. Um, by far, the most attentive film sessions are the film sessions of our, our team. Uh, players love to watch themselves on film. Uh, so, you know, anytime we can show them something they've done well and, uh, and encourage them that I think that's, that's, you know, positive reinforcement right there is, is, uh, certainly effective as well. Dave, let me get you to give us your keys to the game as far as the Bulldogs performance on this afternoon's game against Valdosta State. Yeah, for us, the the biggest thing can be transition defense. Um, they're a team that that plays extremely fast. Um, we're going to have to be um, really, really good at, at that aspect of things. Um, well, we lost him again. Oh man! Is 
Uh, something we did a lot better last night. <clears throat> I think we got Dave, 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 let me let me call timeout on you. For some reason or another, you froze up again. Let me let. let <laughs> I hate to do third times the charm, but let me try okay. that one more time. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. If you will, give us what you think are your keys to the game as far as your team's performance this afternoon against Valdosta State. Yeah, I, I think transition defense is going to be the biggest key. Um, they're very fast, very explosive um, it, and on that aspect of things. So that's going to be really important. Um, it, you know, being being really sound on the on the defensive glass is going to be important. They're they're a good offensive rebounding team. They've got athletes that can crash, and um, you know I think something we've put a lot a lot of emphasis on in in, in the last couple of weeks. And uh, I think we got almost ninety percent of our of our rebound opportunities on the defensive end last night, which is really really good number. Uh, but that'll need to continue um, for us on the offensive side. The best thing we can do to help our transition defense is is get shots. Dave, we wish you extraordinary, extraordinary good luck this afternoon. All right. Thanks, Steve. Well, these things happen. I, <laughs> If you notice there that uh, Dave froze for just a moment, and then you heard me doing a countdown, uh, backwards in that you you have seen one of our secrets here, but we accidentally sent up the wrong piece of video for uh, today. It was the correct, and you got the entire gist of the interview. It's just that we had an edited version that didn't have that blooper in it. So just chalk it up. It does happen sometimes, and we will never do it again, I assure you. <laughs> okay, here we go. we got about three minutes before the second half starts with Union on top, 39-22. And we talked about if this would be a probability problem in math that both in field goals and three-point field goals, both teams would have the same totals. Union with the edge 46 to 29% in field goals. Union 12 out of 26. The Blazers 8 for 24. And then in three-point field goals, Union 46%, 6 out of 13, and the Blazers are two out of seven for 29%. And in free throws, Union nine of 11, including four for four for Naomi Van Ness. She's going to raise her percentage huge today, 82% for Union. And this is so uncharacteristic of this Blazer team that is shooting 74% from the line, 55%, six out of 11. That's just not that's not their usual standard, and I would venture to you that if they get to the line more, that's going to change in the second half. Union with the edge and rebounding, 17-16. to 16. Turnovers, Union has committed 8 to 10 for Valdosta State. And here's a big factor in this 17-point lead. Union has collected 13 points off of the Blazers' mistakes, while VSU has only picked up 4. So there you have it. As Union leads it 39 to 22, it was 23 to 7 in the first quarter, and Valdosta State has never led in this game, and they are your conference leaders. But as I was just talking down below to some people, as we were waiting to start this second half, I can assure you they will make their comeback. You saw what they did so quickly in the second quarter to knife down a 16-point lead to seven. And then Union just very slowly, deliberately moved it back out. Boy, that young lady, Leah Church, was really focused on them. She was studying every move. She has watched a lot of tape on this Valdosta State team. And she said before the game, she said, I want this to be a completely different story than it was last time. And Leah's nailed a couple of them today before her mom and dad, who are in the crowd. And as I mentioned also, uh, Lauren West's folks are here. Her dad is 6'9", and her mom is 5'5". Five, five. Now, go figure that. L- Lauren is somewhat in the middle of that. She's 5'11", although I think, you know, she depends on whether she puts her hair up or not. She could be six foot. But you're going to hear from her at halftime of our men's game today, and it is a fun interview. You just learn some things about these players when we talk to them that maybe you just didn't know. And you'll find out what it was like 
growing up in Nebraska. And she is a complete Chamber of Commerce advertisement for the College World Series. Can't wait for you to hear what she has to say about that big event. <laughs> I'm serious. you gotta, you got to see how she, she describes it. It's going to be Kasharna Lucas to toss it in for a union. This would be huge if the Lady Bulldogs get one right off the bat here because it would extend it to a seven-possession lead. And there you go. The curl layup is there. Perfect geometry for Shanique Lucas. Nine she has and a steal. And Bug is in all kinds of trouble. And Union attempting to try to blow this one out right off the bat. 21 on the shot clock, but Shanique is trying to get traffic directed. And goes down and puts it through again. Shanique with 11. It's a 21-point Lady Bulldog lead. How about that? Almost a reach-in by Keisha. They're going to slow it down, but even down 21, I can tell you this team is not going to panic. They're not going to fold. They will make their run or a multiple number of runs. Eight on the shot clock with the jumper right down through the heart for Ards. And she has six. But Union's still on top by seven possessions. And a whistle away from the ball. They'll play it underneath. And the foul is charged to Tanner. That is her first. Curry is the only one in any serious foul trouble with three. And she ended up playing only four minutes in that first half. All right, Shanique will try to create from about 20 feet outside. Dillard for a three. Yes! Bethany Dillard was quiet in the first half. Now she has three. Boy, Lauren West was all over it. I thought she was going to jump about six feet high. Union up by 22, 46 to 24. This is looking, at least for now, like a carbon copy of Thursday night against West Florida. They go to the inside, and Kasharna steals it. Twelve turnovers now for the Blazers. Open. Shanique. No. Too strong. Van S tips it, though, back over to Dillard for the rebound. And offensive foul. Shanique got just a little bit too much momentum there, and she commits her first of the game. That's Union's ninth turnover. Checking in is Jordan, and coming out is Emma Martin. When I was at Valdosta State, the legendary Dr. Walter Martin was president of that university, and I can tell you one of the finest men that I have ever met. And that foul is on Bug. She just bumped a little bit as they were on the drive, so that's two now for Samaria. And quickly, Mark's going to get Lauren West, Keely Robinson, and Leah Cobble into the contest. So far, seven different Lady Bulldogs have scored. All five of the starters have tallied for Valdosta State, but they haven't been able to get any bench points. Union with 15 points off of Blazer turnovers. But this team will stay disciplined, run their offense, and try to just shave some time and also to shave some of this deficit off. That push just did not go and cobble the rebound. Boy, Little Miss Lightning was just all over it. Shanique just does so many things with the ball and without it. Look at that head fake. Just did not fall. And the rebound coming off to Ards. Well, they break up the press that time with three minutes. And there's almost a steal. And it's over and back. Yep, when they reach back to try to grab it and recover it. Unfortunately, Long was charged with the over and back violation. And DeAndre Shermer was not happy with that call. Cowboy Curling making his first on-court appearance today and getting a, a little bit of a high five from some. I, I think that was a low five instead of a high five. 
Union has dominated. There you go. The give and go. The left-hand layup for Leah Cobble, and she has her first bucket of the day. Union has doubled Valdosta State at 48-24, 9-2 to open the second half, and another steal. Lady Bulldogs' press is all over it. Shanique had the opening, and it didn't drop. Very quick to snatch that rebound. Ard's going to try to take it all the way. Does and draws the foul. And that is going to be on Bethany Dillard. That's her second. So Ard's will come to the line. Leah Church, Shiley Morrison will check in. Shanique will come out as well as Dillard. But Union, just a house of fire here to start this half. 9-2 to two on top, 48-24. to 24. It is an eight-possession lead. That is going to make the hill extraordinarily high to climb for the Blazers, but they are capable of it. Ards right through the heart. She's a 69% shooter. You can see DeAndre Shermer is still having a mild debate with the official about some of the calls in the last couple of possessions. Second one doesn't go. They are 5 of 12 from the free throw line. That is just not Valdosta State shooting. Cobble in the corner. They've got them spread wide. Seven on the shot clock. Lauren's going to have to get rid of it soon. Puts it up. In. Over the defender. Lauren with 11. 31 points in her last two games. Ard slows it up. I don't think anybody saw this coming. They didn't Thursday night with that 26-point victory that Union had over West Florida. Turnaround is not there again. And let's see if that's going to be a foul over the back. It appears that it is. And that one is charged to Lauren West. So Blazers will play it underneath. If Union wins this, they will close to within a half game of the conference leadership. Turnaround jumper, open, and the bank doesn't go. And very quickly down the floor is Morrison. Excellent left-handed ball handler. Here goes Robinson, trying to get between the defenders. She's going to get tied up. They wanted a travel called, and let's see if they did. I think timeout has been called. So, got timeout, 5-13 remaining. Union all over Valdosta State, 50-25. to The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios. With over 750,000 views in 2022, we are where you need to advertise. Please subscribe to our Worthy Road Studios YouTube channel and join the other 4,000 subscribers watching local sports, including Union University, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, and Peabody. Our multi-camera broadcasts include slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios, the premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. Pep band striking up this afternoon at Fred DeLay Gym on David Blackstock Court. And it has been a Lady Bulldog afternoon, 50 to 25. We're about halfway through this third quarter. And just about every piece of the puzzle has been fitting as Mark Campbell would hope it would. Union shooting 50% from the floor to 32% for the Blazers, 46% in three-pointers to 25 for Valdosta, 82% from the free-throw line, and Valdosta an uncharacteristic 42. Union the edge and rebounding, 21 to 19. So across the board, it has been a Lady Bulldog afternoon. And they're playing very relaxed, very calm, and it just seems as though they are they are absolutely as collected as I've seen them all. This has been so far 
the two most complete games that I've seen this team play all year. Big bomb. No, almost there, but the rebound to Church. And they steal it. Oh, that, that, no, that is going to be, they're going to call it on Leah. And you're going to hear a few editorial comments from the crowd, and Mark is one of them. They say Leah committed the foul trying to retrieve it. So that is foul number three on Leah Church, and we got a media timeout. Well, after that rather high schoolish affair, <laughs> it's 50 to 25, Union on top, back in 30 seconds. Buying a home is a major milestone, and at the Bank of Jackson, we want to help you achieve it. Our mortgage specialists can assist you with conventional, VA, FHA, or construction loans, as well as USDA and THDA development loans. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Well, Mark Campbell... You have not seen, I've seen more smiles on his face today than I think I have in any game all season long. Very loose, very relaxed because they are executing, well, Bret Hart, the former WWE champion, used to refer to excellence of execution, and that is what you're seeing from Union this afternoon as the land of a thousand dances strikes up at Fred DeLay. So let's see how DeAndre Shermer plays this one out of the timeout. That is the 15 foul. The one thing the Lady Bulldogs have done, they've committed 14 fouls today. So that will send Ards to the line. And remember, every time you go to the line now is two shots, unless it is at the end of a basket. And she nails that one. Union with the edge 11-4 to four in this third quarter. Got them both. She's shooting well above her average today. And they have got all kinds of trouble for Shiley Morrison. She's cornered how she escaped that, I don't know, but she didn't. Because, look at that. And that is Cersei capitalizing off that turnover. And let's see what happens here. That was a foul before the throw-in. So Union is going to have to get some more help down the court because they are now trying to play Union's game, playing an intense half-court trap. They're not bringing everybody up, but they are bringing three up. And so that is really creating some problems. And you got to have somebody like Shanique there. And somebody's got to come to the ball. Now they got a three-on-one. Dillard with a quick release. No. And Shanique knocked it away, and so it is Blazer ball. So the press is beginning to have a bit of a success for the Blazers. Now Union goes back to it. 420 remaining, 50 to 29, Lady Bulldogs on top. It was 50 to 25 before the last time out. Going for the bomb. No, off the mark. Jordan could not get it. It went too far right. Union will play it. Blazers 10 of 30 from the floor for 33% this afternoon. This is a 43% shooting team on the season. Thompson taking her time. They've got Van S back in there, and she's working side by side with Lauren West. And Shanique lost that one away, and she's going to get it right back, I think. And, nope, they're going to send it back to the Blazers. So Union coughs it up for the 12th time this afternoon. Lauren West will come out, and Kashana Lucas back in. So Lady Bulldogs have somewhat proven human here in the last couple of minutes as they have given up two baskets and had that 25-point lead cut down to 21. 
On the inside, almost stolen, and it is. And here goes Little Miss Lightning. She thought about going all the way with it. It was too dangerous to try to get a pass off the bug. Now they go to Van Ness. She's going to work one-on-one. Spin and fire, and it wouldn't go. It hung up on the lip. And Cersei the rebound. She released it a little bit late. And here goes another steal. And Bug will play it underneath. The foul is charged to Jordan. That's the third team foul of the quarter on the Blazers. Union has committed five. And so once again, they go to that three-woman press. And now Shanique gets it across to her sister. Under three minutes to go. They're going to try to get a give and go here. This time, yeah. No. Oh, my goodness. Van Ness lost it. But gets it back. Let's see if she can do it. Yes, this time with a left hand. Nay with eight. So it's a 23-point margin once again with 2.40 to go in the third quarter. They're giving all kinds of problems. Finally getting a bounce pass to get it across. Dangerous cross-court pass, and that is kicked off of the foot of Jordan. 17th turnover for Valdosta State. Now, they committed 28 when these two teams played down in South Georgia, but it did not affect the outcome because Valdosta State still won it 60-54. to We get close to the two-minute mark of the third quarter. Van Ness is calling for it, and it was too high. And Mark is going to get a change very quickly. And he gets Shanique out of there. He didn't like what he saw, so Shiley Morrison is checking back in. Union with 12 turnovers. But Union has picked up 19 points off of Blazer mistakes on this 23-point lead. Boy, they have been all over the floor today. High lob, too high, and it was last touch by Morrison. They were trying to use a little bit of union strategy there of a big lob, and Deandra Shermer continuing to have a, shall we say, conversation with the official. That's Jordan. And going for the bomb. Nope, not there. Bug the rebound. That's Samaria's first rebound of the day. Oh, they wanted Kasharna to take that shot, but she was hesitant. This time, goes through on the right-hand side of the lane. Her first basket of the day, and nine Lady Bulldogs have scored. Back to a 25-point margin. And they're all over it in the corner. And foul is going to be called. I guess they said a little too aggressive. And that one is going to be on Keisha Lucas. That is her third. And checking back in for DeAndre Shermer is Emma Martin. Cersei is their leader with 13, and Ards has nine. She has a chance to get into double digits on this visit to the stripe. And got it. She has been true this afternoon, six out of seven. On the other side, it's 11 points for Shanique Lucas and Lauren West. Got them both, 54 to 31, as we get close to the final minute of this third quarter with Union securely in command. And right down the left-hand side of the lane. So Bug has 11. We got three with 11 right now, and it's again a 25-point margin. Lady Bulldogs with a 17-9 edge in this quarter, and that's going to be an over-the-back foul perhaps again on Keisha Lucas, and that is four. So Kasharna's going to check out Shanique, Keely Robinson, and I'm trying to see who else that is there i got to tell Lauren she needs to cut the ponytail just a little bit because it's hard to see her number there. All right, it's going to be a two-shot foul. There's no question about that, but they're 
trying to determine whether to bring in the reserves now or after the first shot. Nay is going to check out. So you got West back in, Shanique's back in, and here we go. And it is Cersei today, two out of five from the line. I cannot believe this, and she can't believe it. Two out of six. This is a young lady who's one of the best free throw shooters in the entire conference, and it's just not happening today. Three out of seven to make it a 56-32 to 32 game, and they've backed off of that press. Mark Campbell has gone to his bench with ten players, and Deandra Shermer has played nine this afternoon. Dillard, quick release, just bounded off, and getting that offensive rebound, Shiley Morrison. Union now could play, well, perhaps not for the final shot of the quarter. Shiley's going to take it down the lane again, and the bank rolls off. Quick hands on the rebound for Ards, and she may try to take this all the way. Didn't go. Follow is not there. And Keeley's going to have to get this one down quick. And here goes Miss Lightning. She's got to throw it up now. No. A little bit of desperation because she could not get her feet planted well, but it didn't really matter because Union, with a 17-10 to 10 edge in the third quarter, leading 56-32, to 32, an eight-possession lead as we go to the final 10 minutes, and we'll do that right after we leave the scene to go pick up some green. And how about a little sweet Caroline as we look at both of the teams. Join in at home. Here you go. Sweet Caroline. Ba, ba, ba. Good times never seem so good. No, so good. So good. Caroline. Ba, ba, ba. Who believed they ever would getting all kinds of entertainment from my director Christopher Reasons right here and we have to have about one sing-along per game particularly if the Union fans are in a good mood (laughs) and if they're not in a good mood in this one I don't know who is so a 24 point lead for Union they defeated West Florida 88 to 62 on Thursday night and this could climax a total sweep of these two teams in dominant fashion. But we still got 10 minutes to play. And I never believe a Valdosta State team is out of it. Now, the odds in a probability class would be huge against a major comeback trying to do it eight possessions. But this is Deirdre, this is Deandra Sherman. And let me get that right. De- <laughs> De- Deandra Shermer. And I guarantee you her teams are skilled. They're going to continue to play their defense and their offense in the same discipline that they usually do, and that off the back of the iron. Down to 29% from the floor. And Shanique will try to create from about 25 feet from the basket. Bethany Dillard has one of the quickest releases for a three-pointer. And there you go, the foul. And that one is on. That's on Tanner. That is her second. From our vantage point, sometimes it's a little difficult to see the numerals because the borders are not really bright enough to give us that, that total vantage point. Tipped away. It was one of those, shall we say, iffy passes. Shanique was trying to go cross court, and she was very fortunate that it was tipped away. 
They've got 10 on the shot clock. Union has played fire with that shot clock a couple of times today. Underneath, Morrison gets it. Shiley with a curl hook, and now everybody who has played has scored. Valdosta State is averaging 65 points a game. They're not going to get that today. Big bomb. No, short. That was a little bit too far outside, and I think that's going to be a foul over the back. And let's hope she's okay. I think she hit the deck really, really hard, and I hope it just knocked the wind out of her. Yeah, she appears to be okay. I'll tell you, when something like that happens, I know as a parent myself of, of grown children, but when they played any kind of sport and you see them go down like that, it is one where you're holding your breath there. But it looks like Taylor's okay. She was just stunned a bit as she went to the floor. It has been very physical out there today. And they try to go underneath. And Van Ness is going to be charged with the foul. And there are some people here in the house that may have to go for counseling after that call. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. They're going to have to take a tum when they get home tonight if they remember that one. (laughs) So going to the line for a couple. 11 of 19. Lily Long with her third point of the game. And gets them both. Lily, one of the Australians on this team. And she's a community college transfer. Boy, Deandra can find them from everywhere. She's just one of the most talented recruiters that you'll find in any form of college basketball. 13 on the clock for the Lady Bulldogs. Church is hemmed up and has got to have help. Not inside the foul. So Union will get a new 20 on that foul. That one is charged to Tanner. That is her third. So they've got Curry, Jordan, and Tanner all with three. Tanner will come out. Open. Church. Not there. Just off the back and trying to get it. Almost a tie-up was Leah Cobble. And trying to set it up with eight minutes to go on the inside. And they have beaten Van S, but she caught up with them very quickly. The three is not there. Again, the threes are just not dropping with any degree of regularity. Two out of 12 for 17%. And that one had no authority on that pass. And Union coughs it up. 14th turnover for the Lady Bulldogs. Jumper. In there, a line drive goes for Cersei. She has 16. She is the game leader. 58-36. Union is in no hurry, but Mark Campbell does not want them to lose their rhythm. Everything is rhythm and tempo, particularly when you get to this time of year. You don't want to give that up in the fourth quarter. Now down to 10 on the shot clock. Morrison high to Van Ness, and she loses it. And Mark Campbell with one of his first intense admonishments to his team this afternoon. He did not like the way that was executed, and so Union has given it up 14 times today, 17 for the Lady Blazers. So add that up. That's 31. Jumper. High arc is there. Excellent job for Taylor Searcy. She's been really the offense today. Ards has added a lot from the free throw line. But Taylor with 18 points on this 20-point lead and going to the deck hard is Lauren West. And let's hope she's okay. Remember, you'll see our up-close-and-personal visit with her at halftime of our men's game today, and I think you'll enjoy it. Lauren has just been, she has, in these two games that have been so vital, she has really shown the leadership of a senior. 31 points. Shanique back in the game now. I think they're trying to get a little bit of excitement. And the offensive foul is on Van Ness. 
So Naomi with her second, and that's 15 turnovers now for the Lady Bulldogs. So they go back to the, they're bringing four up front and leaving Van Ness in the backcourt. And now they back away from it. We're about 6.30 remaining. Biggest lead for the Lady Bulldogs was 26 at 58-32. And we've seen a 6-0, now an 8-0 run on the part of the Blazers. And that run has been all Taylor Searcy. She's got 20. 58-40, down to an 18-point lead. Bug trying to find somebody open to get a cutter. They go into Van Ness, and she whips it outside. And Bug for the three. Samaria with 14, 61 to 40. Taylor Searcy, who's had to just deliver everything for the Blazers this afternoon. Eight out of 12 from the floor. Underneath, and it was just too low. Ards hit the iron with it. Bug thought about it again. She is picked up by Martin. Mark calling the signal, and Bug on the drive is fouled. That is the fourth team foul on the Blazers, and that one is charged to Martin. That will be her third. And checking back in, Lauren West for Naomi Van Ness. So Lauren will play pretty much the post at this point. And Lauren may go back door with this. Fall away. No. She had two defenders all over her, and that one was just literally shoved. It's like a shovel shot. Right into the hands of Shanique Lucas. Here she goes. It's going to be Bethany Dillard. Goodbye. Well, not quite. Let's just say instead of goodbye so long for a while as she will go to the line for two. So Bethany on the season is an 86% free throw shooter. The only one better is Shanique with 88. It's been a great day from the line for Union at 9 of 11. Make it 10 out of 12 for 80%. And Bethany with five this afternoon. She's had 21 points in her last two games, and they're trying to get that down. Somebody did not get down quickly enough to pick up Jordan. And I can tell you Mark Campbell was not pleased with that at all. Somebody went to sleep on defense, and you can't do that against this Valdosta State team. They will eat your lunch. I don't care if they are down by 21, and Bug is fouled. And it looks like it is on Curry. And if that is so, that is her fourth. And it is, and timeout. 4.45 remaining. It has been all union. They lead it 63-42. Back after this message. The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios. With over 750,000 views in 2022, we are where you need to advertise. Please subscribe to our Worthy Road Studios YouTube channel and join the other 4,000 subscribers watching local sports, including Union University, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, and Peabody. Our multi-camera broadcasts include slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios, the premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. Mark Campbell told us in the pregame interview, if we do what we did Thursday night and if we trust the press and we don't make silly mistakes, and he was referring back to the 21 turnovers that they made that led to 20 points for Valdosta State in their matchup down in South Georgia. He said, if we don't do that and we do the things we know we can do correctly, this can be a good weekend for it and for us, and it has been. 88-62 to 62 over West Florida on Thursday night and this afternoon. Never trailing in this game, 63-42. to 42. Biggest lead was 26. And we got 445 to go, and now Union for the first time this afternoon is in the bonus, so Bug goes to the line. She's 3 of 4 today. She's Union's leader with 14 points. (laughs) 
Precision personified. And an opportunity to nail another one. And the young lady from Dyersburg gets it back to a 23-point margin. And Union back to the press. They have just almost stolen by Shanique Lucas. And in fact, let's see if is it yet. Yeah, it was a five-second clock violation. So Union will get it. Turnover 19 for Valdosta State. Shanique had to dash to pick that one up because Cersei was getting ready for a coast-to-coast steal had she not. There she goes, wide open. Keely Robinson can't get it. She turned around and was not clearly looking at the basket when she put it up, and so it was a bit short. So Union missed an opportunity off the turnover. They have picked up 21 off of the mistakes this afternoon. Big three, bank shot in there. That's one of those Bank of Jackson threes for Jordan. So they've closed it back within 20, but we're down to four minutes remaining. It is still a seven possession lead for the Lady Bulldogs. And Shanique is not going to get that one, but she'll get two. And that one is on Taylor Searcy. Taylor only her second foul this afternoon, and so Shanique will go to the line. This afternoon, one out of two. She's Union's leading percentage shooter from the line with 88%, but she missed her first one today. Hits it. And you see the rim shot in the background, and you hear it for the exclamation point. This young lady has been a delight to watch during her career here at the Fred. Nails them both, and so she has 13 on the afternoon. And Jordan taking that low center of gravity. And Cersei is still going to try to run it just as they have all afternoon. And that one is going to be a back into you foul and a three-shot opportunity. And Leah Church, nobody feels worse about that than she does. That's her fourth foul. She had her back to the defender and could not control her momentum and literally backed into her. So it's a three-shot foul. That sends Lily Long to the line. And the Australian delivers the first of three. She is an 80% free throw shooter. Short. You could almost tell it. She put a little too much spin on it as she released it. Two out of three. 20-point margin again for the Lady Bulldogs with 3.30 to go. Remember, the men's game will be coming up 27 minutes after the conclusion of this one, and we're going to be showing you highlights of Union's 200th anniversary chapel. Oh, my goodness. Offensive foul, Keely Robinson. And that's her fourth. And it was an historic and a very poignant day yesterday at the Union Chapel. And so we're going to be showing you some of the highlights of that as this storied university celebrates its history and something that we'll never see again, and that's a bicentennial celebration. 3-12 to go. And taking their time once again is Cersei. They'd like to close this down to almost a steal, and it is. Shanique got it. And the foul, trying to re-retrieve it on Jordan, and that will send her to the bench for the rest of the afternoon with her fifth foul. And checking back into the game will be Nelson. So, Shanique goes to the line. Thompson, the game leader with 16. With She's the union leader with 16, and Shanique with a chance to get it to 15 with three minutes remaining. 
This is one of these games that it has been pretty well decided since the early part of the third quarter, but it seems like it has taken forever to play this last 13 or 14 minutes on the game clock. 69-47 is Shanique with 15 now. And this team has just played sterling all-court pressure for the entire game. And Cersei had it knocked away by Ney, and so it goes back into the hands of the Blazers with 19 on the shot clock. So we'll see how Deandra plays this one. It was such a delight to meet the players individually during the South Regionals last year when they were here, and Shanique almost came up with another one. They go for the bomb, and they get it. Excellent job by Ard. She has 14. That is her first three of the afternoon, only four from behind the arc for the Blazers this afternoon. And Shanique taking it, still holding on to it behind the arc. She could dribble that ball forever. Down to eight on the shot clock. Lauren West takes it through and draws the foul. She has spent more time on the floor today, and that's going to get Cowboy Curling back in for another cameo appearance on the floor. And here comes Anna McCready, Jordan Little, and Shiley Morrison checks back in. So the nursing major, and and again, pay close attention when we have the interview at halftime of the men's game with Lauren. Pay close attention to the kind of, when she thought about going, instead of being a nurse, of being a doctor, and she said, I hadn't totally given up on it, but the kind that she wants to be. And she got it. That was a Bank of Jackson free throw. 71-50, Lauren with 13 this afternoon to go with her 20 the other night. 33 points in two games. What a week she has had. Jumper, Cersei has it. What a player that young lady is, even though it's going to be on the short end of it this afternoon. 22 points for Taylor Cersei. Now, I guarantee you in the postseason, she is going to be double tough. And Lauren's going to be called, is it an offensive foul or is it a travel? Offensive foul is charged to Anna McCready away from the ball. So 18th turnover for Union. The two teams have had 38 turnovers this afternoon as opposed to the 49 they had down in Valdosta. I know that's still probably too much and too many for both of these coaches' tastes. Ards, she's had some good moments in this game today. And open for the three. No real serious challenge, and it bounds off, and the tip back in by Searcy. You usually see that kind of tip in men's basketball. So they've closed it to within 17, and Mark does not want them to put on the brakes at this point because this team has dominated so much. Jordan Little almost loses it, and it is a jump ball, but Union will play it on the alternate. And we'll have our ball game blitz sports network player of the game named immediately after this one. And it could go two different ways. Jordan Little wide open. What a fake, and then she just took it right down the right-hand side of the street. Cersei takes it slow, goes for the bomb. Not there. And Morrison, after another loose ball, five rebounds this afternoon for Shiley Morrison. Union will probably take one more shot at the basket. And she is clipped, shall we say, by Fry. Is that Fry or Tanner? No, that's Tanner. And so Kate comes out with her fifth foul. And that sends Shiley Morrison to the line for two. And we also have 
Checking in now, Sierra Stedman. So everybody has played for the Lady Bulldogs this afternoon. Right down the middle. 11 different Lady Bulldogs have scored today. In and out for Shiley. So a final possession here for the Blazers and the jumper three. In and out. She was robbed. And Cersei trying to get it home underneath. And it wouldn't go. And Union's going to skate out the game time now, even though they're getting pressed. And this is going to wind it up. It's a 20-point victory for the Lady Bulldogs to go with their 22-point win over West Florida on Thursday night. They get a big, big hand from the home crowd as they win it 74-54. to And a tremendous, just dominating performance, never trailing in the game, getting out to an early lead of 11-3. to And frankly, there was just no comeback in the part. They tried a number of times at one point in the second quarter after Union had a 23-7 lead at the end of the first quarter. The Lady Blazers in about three minutes closed the lead down to within seven and then all of a sudden Union just eased it back out, eased it back out and was up 17 at the half, 56-32 at the end of the third quarter and then wins it going away 74-54 to and so the Lady Bulldogs are only a half game back now in the Gulf South Conference standings. So as they have their post-game prayer, let's give you the totals on this one. Union, 47% from the floor, 23 of 49. Valdosta State, 18 of 50 for 36%. Three-pointers, Union 8 out of 20. They were a lot higher percentage earlier in the game, 8 out of 20 for 40%. And Valdosta State, 4 out of 17 for 23. They just could not make anything fall with any degree of consistency from the outside. In free throws, Union 20 of 23. This is the best shooting day of the season, 87% for the Lady Bulldogs, and that included 5 out of 6 from Bug Thompson, 5 out of 6 from... Shanique Lucas, and believe it or not, four out of four for Naomi Van Ness, and that's usually her weak spot is from the free throw line. And then Union out-rebounding the Lady Blazers 32-31 to in turnovers. Union gave it up 18 times to 20 for the Blazers, but in the game, Union picked up 23 points off those mistakes, Valdosta State 16. So let's run down the scoring. Taylor Searcy was really the offense for Valdosta State today. The rest of the supporting cast, with the exception of Ards, just could not get going. Uh, She was 10 of 16 from the floor, had one three-pointer, nine rebounds. She just literally carried the team on her back, but they needed help from other avenues, and they just didn't come. Ards had 14 points on the day. But half of those were from the free throw line, and so she could not get really cranked up as well. Six points, uh, six rebounds for her this afternoon. So it was just an afternoon that partially because of Union's press and just because shots were not falling for the Blazers, and those days are going to happen. For Union, it was a huge afternoon for three Lady Bulldogs. 16 points for Samaria Thompson. She was four out of seven from the floor, three out of four from behind the arc. Five out of six in free throws. She had a rebound, an assist, and three steals in the game. Fifteen points for Shanique Lucas. Five of 12 from the floor. She didn't have a three today. Five of six from the free throw line. Five rebounds, four assists, and four steals. So she put it all together. And then for Lauren West, another double for her today with 13 points. That's 33 points. This week for Lauren, and it was huge to do that in front of her parents who were here today. And she had four from the field, two out of four from behind the arc, perfect from the free throw line for the second straight time, and had four rebounds. So it's a hard choice to make, but based on the overall total, we're going to give it to Shanique Lucas with 15 points, but she had five rebounds, four assists, four steals, 
and was just really a little bit of everything on the floor, and that's taking nothing away from the 16-point performance of Samaria Thompson. So Shanique is our Worthy Road Studios and our Ball Game Blitz Sports Network player of the game, and congratulations to her and all the Lady Bulldogs for that dominating win, 74-54. to Well, now it is time to celebrate. And that is Union University's bicentennial in full because yesterday in chapel, it was the 200th anniversary Founders Day Chapel. And we're going to pick it up with some of the music and scripture. And then we'll go into some very special interviews with one of the legendary presidents of Union University. So here we go. Celebrate. And then we'll be back to set you up for our men's game.
Well, let's take a look at those starters for Valdosta State. First off, they'll be bringing to the table Jay Rucker. He's a 6'8 junior from Atlanta, transfer from Emmanuel College. He's averaging nine points a game and six rebounds. Jacoby Owens, one of their big standouts. He's the leading scorer, averaging 16 a game from Warner Robins, Georgia, and he transferred in from Gulf Coast Community College. Cam Hamilton is a 5'11 Redshirt senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. He transferred from North Carolina Pembroke. Mohamed Fofana is from New York City. He transferred from Palm Beach State. 6'7 senior, averaging 14 a game and five rebounds. And Caden Bozer, he is from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. He goes 6'8. I just watched him out on the floor. He looks taller than that. 6'8 sophomore. And He's averaging 13 a game and four rebounds, and he's a transfer from Missouri, Kansas City. So here you got a team that is loaded with transfers, and they are lighting it up for the Blazers. Now, let's go to the Bulldogs. It is the same cast of five that you're accustomed to. JT DeBuck, who is averaging nine points a game and leading this team in steals. Jalen Johnson from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Averaging nine a game, a 6'1 graduate student. Bo Gidgel, he had an off night on Thursday night, and they hope he gets back into his rhythm today. 13 points a game, nine rebounds from Los Angeles, California, a 6'8 senior. Jeremiah Littlepage, a 6'8 junior from Birmingham, Alabama, averaging nine a game. And we say hello, as we always do, to Ma Littlepage down there in Alabama. And Ty Parks. The guy with a smile on his face most of the time, averaging 19 a game and seven rebounds. The senior, 
Six foot five from Pocahontas, Tennessee, and those are your starters brought to you by the Ball Game Blitz Sports Network, powered by Worthy Road Studios. And this is one that I know after the performance on Thursday night that Dave Niven definitely wants to see a flip-flop on that, as you heard during his interview during our women's game today. Mike Helfer is the head coach of the Blazers, and as they come in today, here's where they stand. Union is in fifth place, a game out of fourth in the conference. The top four teams will host a round of the tournament. Union is a half game ahead of Valdosta State. Union 11-6 in the conference. Valdosta State 11-7, 15-9 overall. Union is 12-9 on the season. So here we go, important for both teams for positioning as we get ready to get to the postseason. we still got three weeks left here until we get there, but this is crucial. Here you go with Jacoby Owens. He is one. We're going to be calling his name a lot today. Cam Hamilton from Charlotte. And from New York, Mohamed Fafana. And winding up with the big guy, Caden Bozer, that goes six foot eight. This Valdosta State team averaging 86 points a game, one of the highest scoring teams in the entire Gulf South Conference. Union averaging 70, but holding their opposition to 68 a game. And as usual, it is JT DeBuck from Broward County, Florida. And Jalen Johnson from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Bo Gidgel, who transferred in here from Prairie View A&M. Jeremiah Littlepage. They got another year of him here at Union and one of the nicest young men you'll ever meet. And then Ty Parks. The guy with the mischievous grin many times. He's all business on the court. It doesn't it doesn't take much to break up Ty though. He'll he'll get into a grin and all of a sudden then it's just a a big guffaw and <laughs> you know you've got him there. Well the Bulldogs dropped one 85 to 79 to West Florida. Union won the matchup with Valdosta State down on its home floor back in December, 81-78. to And Ty had 22 points in that game. To jump it is Jay Rucker against Jeremiah Littlepage, and we're about set to get going with this one. Enjoy it wherever you are, and ladies and gentlemen, let the games begin. And that one, a couple of volleyball tips, sends it into the hands of the Blazers. They work that perimeter. And you're going to see a lot of inside matchups that could be absolutely entertaining to watch during the afternoon. Back door, and the layup goes through. Good start for Rucker as the Blazers start up 2 0. Union has to be crisper with three point shots in this game and also fewer turnovers. Bo overshoots the layup, but he gets his offensive rebound and draws a two-shot foul. And that one is going to be on Rucker. Union had a rough time from behind the arc Thursday night against West Florida. And in the second half, they were only trailing by one. They got in foul trouble in the first half. They were only trailing by one at halftime, but, boy, the first ten minutes of that second half and Union fell behind 18 made a spirited rally and closed it to within six but it was just too much having to climb the ladder in and out but high for that offensive board was Little Page bomb is there JT DeBuck to give Union the early lead now at three to two JT is a 38% shooter from behind the arc. And they invited that three, but it was well short. 
and parks the rebound. Boy, that was a touch pass, and look at that. Bo Gidgel, the floater that goes through. Perfect assist by Ty Parks. That is his 61st assist of the season. Bozer has the big height. He'll be working against both Parks and Little Page in this game. And right down the lane, free ticket for Fofana. He's averaging 13 and a half a game. You cannot leave him open at any given time. It has been a brutal stretch for both of these teams. And there you go, a big bomb for Jeremiah Littlepage. How about that, Ma? An 8-4 union lead. And the Bulldogs hitting their first threes of the game, and sometimes that does not happen. The answer shot is right there for Bozer. So this is one where you could see a lot of offense in this game, particularly if they continue to shoot from outside both teams this way. Little Page doesn't put up many threes, but here's another one, and another one in. This time, it's Jalen Johnson. But they left behind wide open Rucker. You can't celebrate it much, and Rucker got behind everybody. Kicked away. Little Page was trying to sneak it in to Gidgel. Bulldogs had an early lead against West Florida, but it just couldn't hold up. And in that, as we say, the first seven minutes of the second half, everything just seemed to fall apart and everything seemed to work for West Florida. The Argos just seemingly had it together in that second half. Big lob comes back around the arc. And almost a steal. That was a dangerous bounce pass trying to get it into Gidgel because there were four hands of Blazers that were trying to knock it away. And the official says, get over here and toss it in, not where you were standing. (laughs) We're three minutes into the contest here at Fred DeLay Gymnasium. Steve Beverly with your play-by-play story. And look at this. Beautiful turn and spin move by Gidgel. And a whistle. This Blazer team is incredibly fast. They are not going to waste any time trying to get it up the floor. That foul was charged to Johnson. That's the first one on the Bulldogs. Valdosta State with a little bit of more calm tempo right now. Staying behind the arc. And you got Little Page down low, tries to pick it up defensively, but that left open Rucker for the stuff. So Rucker quickly with six of the 11 points for the Blazers. And the turn. That sky hook did not go, and the rebound to Hamilton. And he thought about going all the way. Back door is... Broken up and going backward, and for the three, it was not there for Fofana. And going to the deck hard, I think that was Johnson. No, it was DeBuck. And we already have our first time out. Union on top, 13-11. to 11. Back with more after this. We realize you have a busy lifestyle. And at the Bank of Jackson, we're here to help you fulfill all of your financial needs, personal and business loans, mortgages, online banking and bill pay, and so much more. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. 
Let's look at what our early stats look like. Bulldogs shooting five out of seven from the floor for 71%. They've hit all three of their three-pointers. Missed two free throws for Valdosta State. They haven't been to the free throw line. Five out of eight for 62.5%. And they're one out of three from behind the arc for 33. Each team with three rebounds. And nobody's made a turnover yet. And for both coaches, I know that's a happy occurrence. And in scoring, Jay Rucker is the early game leader. And the junior has picked up six for the Blazers. For Union, it is Bo Gidgel with a couple of baskets. He's got four, and you got three each for DeBuck, Little Page, and Johnson. They each have bombed one from outside, and that's not something we see often from Jeremiah Little Page, and we will definitely take it. So Union going to the press right now. And they're double-teaming the ball extremely hard. But look at the ball-handling ability of Owens. Jacoby Owens, one of the fine players in this conference. Fall away. Three is there. I think they're giving him a two. No, they gave him a three. And what a spin move by Little Page. You might as well have called that a -a tilt-a-whirl. And finally, with about three head fakes, it's Rucker, who now has eight. And this is going to be a very physical and a very speedy game, particularly the way the tempo is being directed right now. Going to the deck hard and drawing the foul is going to be Johnson. I think he saw those defenders checking in on him, and he took a spill, but he'll also take two free throws. On the season, we try to get you up to date on this very quickly. He's a union's leading free throw shooter, 87% from the floor. And the grad student knocks it through. Ties this one at 16. In case you just joined us, Lady Bulldogs put one on Valdosta State this afternoon, 74 to 54. Never trailed in the game. And it was a huge day for three Lady Bulldogs, Shanique Lucas, Lauren West, and Samaria Thompson, all in double figures. And dish it down for the stuff. So far, Rucker is almost unstoppable, and he's very happy about it if you noted the expression on his face. Both teams playing very efficiently in offense. A double spin move, and the hook is there for Ty Parks to get his first basket. And they left wide open underneath, and the foul is going to be on Gidgel. This Blazer team is so lightning fast that as they come down the floor, they've got somebody underneath so quickly, you have got to be very fast to get down and pick them up. And we're about to see three subs coming in for Union. Well, no, I think it's two. You're going to see Yvonne Prude and Lane Sarver. Right through the heart. Blazers is only a 67% free throw shooting team, but as we always say, when teams come in here to Union, it seems as though their percentages get much higher. <laughs> But Rucker has been all over it in the early going. This guy's already got 13 points, and we've only played five and a half minutes. He could end up having 40 very easily if he keeps up at this pace. And again, this has been more of a seesaw game here in the last three to four minutes. Parks. And Little Page, Sarver almost lost it, and he did. Quick hands there by Eisler. That's Mike Eisler from Albany, Georgia. And that behind-the-back dribble by Bozer. That's hard to navigate on the run, and going in the drive and drawing the foul. 
And the foul is charged to the buck. That's his first. But they'll go to the line for a couple. No, they said it was before the shot, so they're not going to shoot this one. Well, the way Rucker's playing this afternoon, somebody is going to have to double and triple team him today because they're, and they're going to get somebody in as a sub. Bozer's going to come out and checking in Cam Selders. He's from Morgantown, West Virginia, and he's a 6'4 junior. Blazers, as I say, great speed, but they also can be very deliberate in their execution. And that one was curled too high, but tipped right back in by, no, it wasn't Rucker this time. It was Eisler. Blazers with their largest lead now of three at 22 to 19. JT is going to, I think he's trying to call a timeout, and he is. So we'll take time out, 13-19, and Dave Niven not happy with the official. We'll try to find out what that's all about right after this message. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way? Peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. Union has Dujan Jordovich into the game now as they trail by three. And so we've got a number of reserves in and the foul. Nope. They're going to call that an offensive foul. And Dave Niven had some very pointed comments to the official during that timeout. Yvonne Prug is charged for the offensive foul, so for Union, it's the second turnover of the game. Blazers haven't given one up yet. So let's see how Coach Mike Helfer plays this one coming out of the timeout. More deliberate coming down the floor. And they're going to go to the inside. A real physical battle going over on the left side of the court. Big bomb. Not there. Iron was unkind, but they get the offensive rebound. That was Walker with it. And that one's short. But once again, another offensive board and the foul. You can't give this Blazer team two and three opportunities at the basket. They will eat your lunch. And Sarver is charged with this one. So going to the line is Eisler. He is from Albany, which is above Valdosta. It's about maybe not quite an hour's drive. And you got towns like Tifton and Waycross, a lot of others that are right around where Albany is that are within easy driving distance. He gets the second of the two free throws, 23 to 19. Albany located right on what used to be called Corridor Z that sends everybody all the way from the Florida line up to Columbus, Georgia. And got a whistle away from the ball. We have been having a lot of fouls called here in the last couple of minutes of the game. That one is charged to Walker. And Sarver, it's Prug that will check out as well as JT to Buck. And let's see how Dave Niven's going to play this one as we approach the 12 minute mark. Wide open, the big splash! On the inside to Bo Gidgel. Just sneaked behind everybody and delivered. And that one's tossed away. They tried to get one in the corner for Selders. And now the officials are going to have to talk this one over, I think, as to whether this is going to be Union or 
Blazer ball. And it is a three-way conversation. They say it is a jump ball, and the alternate possession will go to Union. See some of the Lady Bulldogs over across the way in the crowd watching the men's action. After their exclamation point victory this afternoon. They'll be seeing Valdosta State again in the conference playoffs. Rest assured of that. And Bo Gigel, that double fake, and then dished it off on the inside to Jordovic. And we are deadlocked at 23. This is a very crisp passing team. Fall away jumper is there for Walker. That's his first basket. You've had six different Blazers to score and six different Bulldogs. This is about as evenly matched in this first half as you could possibly imagine. No lead has been greater for either team than four points. Bo with that backup move, and then the three is off the mark for Ty Parks. they got to be careful of a backdoor play, and that one rims out. Gidgel is going to be a jump ball situation, it appears, and that will send it back into the hands of the Blazers. So 10.52 remaining, and we'll take another break. It's 25-23, Valdosta State against Union in one that is about as even as it can get, so stay with us. Are you looking for a Christian college or starting the college search process? I want to take a second to tell you about my school, Union University in Jackson, Tennessee. Union is a private four-year university known for its rigorous academics, Christ-centered community, and the success of its graduates. My favorite part about Union is the faculty. The professors here are so intentional about helping students grow not only academically, but also spiritually. You should check out Union for yourself. Come for a visit. I know you'll love it. At Union University, you'll be transformed. Well, Coach Mike Helfer and his Blazers, they have matched cards with Union so far. Two-point lead right now, 25-23. to 23. Jay Rucker, game's leading scorer with 12 for Union. It is Bo Gidgel with six and five each for Little Page and Johnson. Each team has had six players to score so far in the contest. Very few mistakes. Union has made two turnovers, one for the Blazers. And in rebounding, Valdosta State has the distinct edge, 7-3, to three, and particularly five of those are offensive boards. So that's where VSU is getting some of those second and third chance opportunities at the basket. Blazers will play it, trying to go up four. <clears throat> Almost stolen by Gidgel, and they'll play it again. <clears throat> Bo almost went up into the, uh, <laughs> into the locker room to get that one. <clears throat> little Page getting a little bit of a rest down inside the bench. <clears throat> you know, that pass almost went into Humboldt. Down to nine on the shot clock. A little bit of a stiff arm and a steal. Quick hands. Look at this one. This is Ty Parks. He is not going to be denied. He drew the foul. He wanted that basket so badly. And you could tell that there was a disagreement on the part of the Blazers as to whether that should have been a foul, but that is going to send Ty to the line, and he is their leading shooter from the free throw line. Well, actually number two, 85%. But we get down 85-87, Johnson in the lead on that. It doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. Ty is extremely dependable from the free throw line and a chance to tie it up. Bozer's going to check back into the game for the Blazers. (laughs) 
Here goes Ty again, the sports management major. Said he hasn't really made up his mind exactly what he wants to do after graduation. But I guarantee you, if he does it as well as he does on the court, he'll be very successful. They got to hurry to get this one across. They've got him spread out. Going for the bomb. In and out. But that follow shot is right there for Bozer. And that, again, is the key thing, is that Union is giving them a number of second-chance opportunities at the basket. And we are now halfway through the first 20 minutes of action, short on that three-pointer by Johnson. And this is going to be a no-brainer. Easy toss in. That was just like a dump truck. Bozer now with seven. And you now have a four-point Blazer lead. Neither one of these teams can really afford parts for the three. From about 22 feet. Tie with seven to take the lead for the Bulldogs. Neither one of these teams can really afford a defeat here, but the big question is it probably would be more damaging to Union than it would be to Valdosta. From the corner, the three is there. Almost a line drive for Lane Sarver. So now you have seven Bulldogs that have scored, and there is your answer shot. No doubt about it by Ryan Black. He comes off the bench and averages nine a game for this Valdosta team. Trying it from the corner again. Yes! It's raining threes here at the Fred. Sarver with two of them. Almost stolen, but Parks will be charged with a foul. That's his first. He tried to sneak one on the backside and reached in. Union back into the lead very quietly by two. The way this game is being played, this one could be, each team could have 50 at halftime. This has just been a hugely offensive game. Percentages look good in every category for both these teams. Here goes Bozer trying that. Thought he might go for a hook. And the floater goes right through for Owens. And so Jacoby Owens with his first basket of the game. Owens, their leading scorer, averaging 16 a game. And he was quiet until the eight-and-a-half-minute mark of this first half. This is one of those that you'd love to see a backdoor play if you're a Union fan. Nine on the shot clock. Johnson has it swatted away by Bozer, and so there will be six left for the Bulldogs to navigate one, and Bozer really tried to negotiate possession on that but went nowhere. they got to count it down because I don't think And let's see what happens. I think there is an issue with the shot clock. Now, let's see what happens. They uh, One second went off. Now they've closed it down to three. So with three seconds to go, this is going to be a very, very treacherous journey for the Bulldogs to try to – now they put four on the clock. So they're going to bring it in on the side and Johnson to toss it in. So they have very – and Dave Niven is frantically directing traffic to move. And he's going to have to hurry. And drawing the foul at the 11th hour was Bo Gidgel. Smart move because he's an excellent driver to the basket, and so he'll go to the line for two. Bo's missed his only two opportunities. And so far in the game, he has six points for the Bulldogs. And timeout before the free throws. That may ice him a bit. So 7.59 to go. It is all deadlocked at 34. More in a moment. 
The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios. With over 750,000 views in 2022, we are where you need to advertise. Please subscribe to our Worthy Road Studios YouTube channel and join the other 4,000 subscribers watching local sports, including Union University, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, and Peabody. Our multi-camera broadcasts include slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios, the premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. And those shots in the huddle are being provided you by the newest member of our crew for Worthy Road Studios, and that is Alyssa Tatch, who not only was one of my students before I retired at Union University, but she also was a dynamite volleyball player. Sadly, her eligibility is up. Uh, She played in her graduate year this year, and I wouldn't get within five feet when she rears back and fires and tries to shoot one of those cannonballs like she does when she's on the court. And she told me before the game today that she does miss it. And we hope to be back with another round of Union Volleyball next fall, starting in August. We will be back here two weeks from this past Thursday night on the 16th as Union will be here for one of the final home games of the season. They'll be taking on Alabama Huntsville. And then two weeks from today, it will be West Alabama. And we'll have those for you. Alexander Bitterling will be bringing you the action during those two games. And we hope you'll tune in to be with us. It'll be a 5.30 tip-off, 5.15 airtime for us on the 16th. And on the 18th, it'll be just like today, 1.45 for airtime and 2 o'clock for the tip-off. And Union takes the lead on Bo's two free throws. Bozer is working right there in the corner. And the give-and-go that has worked so well for them all night long, Fofana with four. He's their second leading scorer, averaging 13 and a half a game. And this has just been very steady all the way through. Not a lot of transition baskets. You've got a couple of stuffs in there that have gotten the crowd into it. But this has just been more of a grinder type of game. They got a hurry. He puts it up with the fake and the foul. At again, after almost the shot was released. And what a move on the part of Jalen Johnson. And that's the kind of things that will curl a coach's hair if he still has some. Those three shot fouls, and particularly as the shot is being released. And so Jalen Johnson, the top percentage free throw shooter for Union, has got three opportunities. Short. Oh, my. That You can go... Ten games and not see Jalen shoot one that's that's far off. (laughs) It wasn't a brick, but it was very close to it. And missing, too. That, that That just does not happen. That's almost like what happened to Valdosta State's Taylor Searcy during the women's game in which she just had one of her toughest free throw shooting days of the entire season and maybe her career because they just didn't fall for Taylor. One out of three to give Union the lead back at 37-36. As we approach the seven-minute mark. Beautiful kick out, but it is going to be a foul. And it may be a good thing for the Bulldogs because they were open wide for a three. That one is going to be charged to Yordovich on the offensive foul. Seventh team foul for Union. It's actually the defensive foul. And so going to the line, loosening it up, getting those shoulders in very comfortable fashion is Ryan Black from Ocean Springs, Mississippi, a transfer from Holy Cross. I got to tell you, Coach Helfer has done an outstanding job of working the transfer portal to get so many of these young guys in here. And this to give the Blazers the lead once again. And we have had seven different lead changes. On 
Under seven minutes to go. And a big bomb for Parks, and it goes off the top of the iron. And finally coming down with it, the Blazers are on the fast motion attack. I thought he was going to go for a three, but instead that left-hander will not go for Owens. He changed his position. And on the other side, the bank is there for Parks. Got one of those Bank of Jackson shots. And on the corner, on the drive, it is Parks with the foul. And so that sends the Blazers to the line. We just got a seesaw game going right now. There's still 6.18 to go in the first half. So Bozer goes to the line. In and out. Blazers are 5 for 7 from the line. Union 7 of 11. And Ty is going to take a big break, come out, and he won't be out of there long, I guarantee you. Probably no more than a minute or two. And so we're tied for the eighth time in this game at 39. Nobody has been able to get any kind of a cushion of a lead. Each team's largest one is four. Here's Gidjo working one-on-one. And the line drive three is off the back of the iron, tip out off the hands of Bozer. So Union will play it with a new 20 and under six minutes to go. They go to the inside to Yordovich, and he loses it off of his knee. What a move. Instead of dishing it off, taking it himself, and that is the way Jacoby Owens just throttles an opposition. Doing it off the turnover. Union blew a golden opportunity there. And another steal. Not protecting the basketball on these possessions for the three. No, off the mark. And just willing that one in was Fofana with six. Muhammad has had himself, when he gets underneath and he gets that head of steam, it is almost impossible to stop him. So the Blazers go back to matching there. And there's a beautiful block. Union recovers it. JT tried to dish it inside to Yordovich, and it was just too hard. JT gets that head of steam going, and sometimes he gets a little bit too fast. And that was it. And so Union making three straight turnovers here. And this could give the Blazers an opportunity potentially for a three-possession lead as we work down inside of five minutes. He thought about the three. Sarver's all over him. He's an excellent defensive player. Going for the bomb. New, way short. Sarver the rebound. Fofana just had no arc on that one at all. Quick release. In there. I'm not sure Proog thought that that was going to go because he was quickly getting underneath to try to grab the rebound, but Union cuts it back to within one. Trying an answer shot. It is there from 25 feet out for Bozer. 11. And he's got two three-pointers this afternoon. And we're under four minutes, so we got one more media timeout to navigate. Prug is trying to find somebody to cut. Yeah, and this is going to be it. The hook. Soft curl hook goes through for... Bo Gidgel, the bomb, not quite there, and the rebound comes off this time to Johnson, and he'll take it a bit slower. Both these teams still could end up with 50. I said that earlier. Not, I was half serious about it, but it, it may happen. All right, watch Bo. He may try his backward move. He's got 12 seconds. He's going to work against Fafana. 
What a fake in the layup, and it doesn't go, but the tip is there. Great concentration on the part of Proog. How in the world Gidgel missed that layup, I will never know, but we are tied again at 46. The bomb. The three is right through the heart, the third one for Bozer. I think they are going to both have 50 when they go to the locker room. And it hasn't been that explosive because you haven't had a team to rip off eight, ten points in a row. Now here goes Gidgel again on the inside. And that was a bad dish off. And this is going to be a piece of cake. On the inside, and that was just simply getting behind everybody. And Selders has his first basket, and nine Blazers have scored. On the inside, jumper, short. And Union letting this one get back away from them a bit. Chance for the largest lead of the game. It goes out of bounds off of the knee of Jacoby Owens. And finally, we have a timeout with 2.02 remaining. Blazers lead it 51-46. to Buying a home is a major milestone. And at the Bank of Jackson, we want to help you achieve it. Our mortgage specialists can assist you with conventional, VA, FHA, or construction loans, as well as USDA and THDA development loans. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Well, Union with an opportunity to slow this one down. 51 to 46, they were in danger of going down seven on that last possession. And for the Blazers, Bozer and Rucker have 26 of their 51 points. Those two have more than half of the output for Valdosta. And for Union, Bo Gidgel with 10 and Ty Parks with 9. You got six each for Johnson and Sarver. This game's had a little of everything. You've had Seven three-pointers for the Bulldogs, five for Valdosta State. And you've had so much offense in here. Union shooting 62%, Valdosta State 61. Very few turnovers. Union's given it up six times, though, and that has led to nine Valdosta points. And Cowboy Curling making his official off-court appearance. And we're getting under two minutes. And let's see what JT is going to try to do with it on this possession. Almost stolen. Eisler was right there and was wanting to go down the court for a no-brainer and just went out of bounds. Union was 17 to shoot. I'll tell you, Parks wanted to let fly with the three, and he just goes for the big splash. He went through everybody. Back down to three. This is where, if you're a Union fan, you want to see a stop. And from the outside, the bomb is there. Owens just had too much time to set up. He has seven. And the Blazers now have their largest lead at six. And the foul on that drive by Johnson. And let's see who that's going to be on. That one is going to be charged to Black. That is his first. And Union now in the bonus. So Johnson is the kind of guy you want there because he's usually dependable on the front end of the one and one. And if he nails a couple here, Union will be at 50 at halftime. Jalen, excellent form. Gets a nice spin on the ball, particularly as he releases it. Jalen with seven, and this would cut the lead to four. Well, the crystal ball was correct. Each team has hit 50. 
Now the Blazers will pull up and shoot it from anywhere on the floor. Mark my word. And that one, oh my goodness, how in the world did that happen? Union thought it had a steal and instead... Turnaround was there, and a chance at a three-point play, and the foul is called on Prue. Each coach still has four timeouts remaining in the game. So this would give Valdosta State a three-possession lead with a minute three to go. Selders is, again, not one who goes to the free throw line an extraordinary amount, but he cashed in there. So Union trying to close it back to a two-possession game as they navigate this final minute of the first half. And, oh, my goodness. Now, you saw that leg stretch on the part of Bo Gidgel, and I can imagine every Union fan in this arena was absolutely, it looked like almost it could have been anything. I think he's okay. But that got stretched extremely far. It could have been a hamstring. It could have been anything else. But he's shaking it off, and I think he's going to stay in there. The foul is charged to Eisler, his first. So Bo, after Cowboy finishes his activity, is going to go to the line for two. So this is going to be charged as a flagrant foul, so he's going to the line for two with nobody there, and the Bulldogs will get the ball. That is not what you would have expected, and Bo in and out. Boy, when you have them like this, you've got to capitalize. Short. Oh, frittered away a golden opportunity there. Bo, two out of six. At the line. Union will get the ball back, but they needed those. And timeout called by Valdosta with 50 seconds remaining in the half, leading 57 to 50 over Union. Dave Niven trying to reset the play as Union will bring it in underneath its own goal. Seems as though it has taken 20 minutes to play this last four minutes of the first half. And these two teams have played games before in which this was the final score, and we still got another 20 minutes to go after this. And they're going to take it all the way back with Gidgel again. Shot clock had not started, and that's why they stopped the action. And the official is trying to yell to the scorer and to the timekeeper where to put it, and that's going to be with 17 seconds. Now they've got it. All right, same thing. They go back to Gidgel. Down to seven on the shot clock. They have to hurry. They got to let that one fly. Yes! Just as the buzzer expired, JT knocks that one home. Blazers will play for the final shot of the first half. And what an interesting one it has been with more offense than you could ever possibly imagine. And Jacoby Owens just taking his time with it. Quick release on the three. No. And Union will not get one. That would not count as a shot because it came after the buzzer went off. So, what a half it was as Valdosta State leads 57-53, scoring 
Bozer has 14 and Rucker 12 for Valdosta State. For Union, it is 11 for Ty Parks, 10 for Bo Gidgel, and 8 for Jalen Johnson, 6 each for Sarver and DeBuck. So that's where the scoring is right now as Union goes to the locker room trailing by 4. Here at halftime, we want to introduce you to a young lady that we have enjoyed watching as a Lady Bulldog, and she transferred in here from Fort Hayes State University, and she has been a delight. 33 points she's had in her last two games, including 20, this past Thursday night. Let's go to this special feature and meet Lady Bulldog Lauren West. Well, if you saw our game on Thursday night, you saw a complete team performance like none we've had all season long by the Lady Bulldogs in their 88-62 to victory over West Florida. And the young lady that you see right to my left right now is one who just had a career game for Union with 20 points. She was burning them from the outside and from the inside. She was perfect from the free throw line. She had three steals. She had rebounds. It was a big night for Lauren West, and she was our ballpark blitz player of the game, and now we have her right here to meet you up close and personal. Lauren, it is so good to have you with us. Thank you for having me, Mr. Beverly. Well, I got to start out. You're from Omaha, Nebraska, Mm -hmm. and uh, so tell me what life was like, if, if that's where you grew up, tell me what life was like in that area. Boring. Um, <laughs> very boring. I mean, all they have is a zoo and College World Series. Well, I, see, I was, was going to ask you about that, about the College World Series. Now, how many times have you been to that? I probably only went like two or three times, and it was just to, you know, talk to people. I never watched the baseball. It was really <laughs> just a hangout. That's what all the kids in high school did, just to go hang out with people. Something tells me that the <laughs> the Chamber of Commerce in Omaha <laughs> will not use you as a spokesperson for them, <laughs> for visitors. No. <laughs> boring. Okay. Anyway, well, let's let's get into it about basketball because uh, I've asked so many of the Lady Bulldogs about this. What started you off? in basketball what led you to the point that you knew you loved the game and that you wanted to learn how to play it at a high level Mm -hmm. um I think it started with my dad because he played basketball he played college basketball and I started playing when I was four or five and he was my coach and he's playing YMCA ball and I was just running all over the court they could tell I was going to be good I was competitive I've always been competitive so I don't know. I didn't really play any other sports, so I don't know. Kind of knew it was my thing. So it was just something that, if you get right down to it, came natural to you. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Let Let's talk about this. Uh, the game certainly changed for a lot of people before you were born. When suddenly we had the three point mm-hmm. shot adapted into it, and uh, this is an offense that you're playing on right now that depends a lot on the guards and being able to deliver from outside. Tell me how you developed your skill at being able to shoot the long distance shot and what it feels Mm -hmm. like when you know that that ball's going in. Yeah. I'll also say that I feel like I'm a natural shooter. I don't know. Um, Spent a lot of time on the gun, getting up thousands and thousands of shots. Um, It's always kind of been my thing. I mean, The last game you saw me drive more than I had this whole season, but so that was fun. But um, yeah, it's it's the greatest feeling whenever I make a three. It's really frustrating when you don't because our team depends on it, but yeah. Well, you had uh, this past Thursday night, you had a game that had the crowd up (laughs) for it all the way because that was not exactly predicted to be a game that was going to be a runaway because of how how tight it was and the loss you had down at West Florida. But this is, you know, this was what you called a complete team effort, but you just seemingly got better as the game went along. Uh, Tell me about your coaches as you went through youth ball and then got into high school. Uh, How how really influential were they for you? Um, My dad coached me my whole life through all AAU, all the summer ball, 
spent a lot of time with him in the car driving places and that could have been a good thing it could have been a bad thing but um I've learned a lot from him and otherwise my high school coach Dave Deal um he's a great guy uh we didn't really get along my freshman year that was his first year coaching but um yeah, I didn't really play that much that year, and I always be like, "Dang it!" Because I only I scored nine hundred, I think sixty seven points. I was so close to a thousand points. I'm like, if I would have played my freshman year, <laughs> darn it! But he he's a great guy, and um, he's funny. He kind of reminds me of Campbell too. Like, I can joke with him and basketball. He makes basketball fun and practice fun and that type of stuff. So that's what it's all about for me. I like to have fun. I'm really goofy in practice. I'm sure if you ask anybody, they'll say I'm the clown on the team. So. <laughs> you went to Fort Hayes State before you came to Union and that's a school that is familiar to a lot of people around here because uh, when we had the NAI Women's National Championship at Union that was in fact uh, of the second national champion that we had here at Omen Arena during that storied tournament that was here for 22 years uh, so you went there, but take us on your journey that went from Division One basketball to Fort Hayes State and then making your way to Union. Yeah. Um, the first school I was, my family had just moved to Kansas City at the time. I had just got to college. So I was actually moving into my dorm in the summer to start summer, summer workouts and summer class while my parents were moving into our new house. So that was fun. Um I will say I did go home a lot because they were only like 25 minutes away. So, um, and I'm very big on family and I'm very close with all my family members. So, um, otherwise, yeah, I really liked the team there. It just wasn't, the school wasn't a good fit for me exactly. And then, yeah, I went to Fort Hayes State. Um, I ended up there because he reached out. He was one of the first schools that reached out to me and he had recruited me in high school. So I was familiar with him already. And um, I knew that they were a winning program, just like Campbell. The coach has been there for many, many years, and they win championships. So I was like, okay, let's try this out. And it's only like four hours from home, straight drive. Let's do this. And then Union, um, I'm so grateful that I ended up here. It's been a long, long journey. Um, I definitely will say this is the college experience I was looking for. This is the perfect fit for me. And I'm so thankful for Campbell and the opportunity he's provided me with. And I love the team. I don't have a bad thing to say about anybody. So I'm happy. Well, there are a lot of folks around here that are very happy that you made that choice to come to Union because not just for uh, the basketball, but for the education you have here. And, yes. and I know you've gotten to know many people since you've been here. Mm -hmm. Now, now, now let's talk about family because you just mentioned that. Uh, mm -hmm. Take us through the, uh, the entire family and mm -hmm. tell us how everybody fits into place uh, where they are. Mm -hmm. So I'm the middle child. I'm the only girl. I have two brothers. Um, I'm very close with my brothers. When I'm home, whenever the chance I get, I'm hanging out with my little brother. We're always doing stuff, watching TV. So he's kind of like my little bestie when I'm at home. Um, my dad, his name is Ben. My mom is Dana. My dad's like 6'9", so you can't miss him in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he's definitely instilled the passion and love for basketball in me because I grew up with him coaching me ever since I was four, all throughout, until – basically college he coached me every summer for AAU um there were some fun times and some bad times dad being a coach is there can be some positives and negatives but <laughs> I I wouldn't take it for granted so that's like what happened with us when we homeschooled our children and there were good days oh, and not so good days yeah. for their notes. uh and let's talk about this uh you're part of union now and the union experience uh what has that been like for you not just in basketball mm -hmm. but as a student because you yep. are uh, a senior as far as where you are in, mm -hmm. in class right right so i've been to a lot of schools done a lot of things and i don't always like having to start over and do new things but it's been a really easy transition here and i was really close with everybody basically immediately when i got here i didn't have any problems they're very welcoming. Um, 
that's Camel's good thing is trust. So I knew immediately that I could trust him, whatever he has to say, um, even if that's him. He likes to point out people's weaknesses, which I'm thankful for that. But um, yeah, I really like the school. I love the city. Um, everybody here is just extremely nice. I will say people compare it, like comparing it to the other schools I've been to, the people here are so nice. So I really enjoy that. Let's also talk about this. What are your plans? What uh, Tell the folks at home your major and then what mm -hmm. your plans are beyond basketball, what you want to do at mm -hmm. least right now, what you think you may want to do long term. Okay. Yeah. So freshman year, I started out as a biology major and I was interested in dermatology, but that didn't work out. Wait a minute. Don't you mean you wanted to be Dr. Pimple Popper? <laughs> yes, I want to be Dr. Pimple Popper. I love her. I watch her videos all the time. Still do. All over TikTok. You know, I'm on TikTok. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, sophomore year, then I changed to chemistry, and that's when COVID happened. And I was taking all my classes online. I was taking organic chemistry online, and that was a nightmare. So, that I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this either. So I was like, okay, nursing, that sounds good. My mom's a nurse. I know she enjoys her life, her job, all that. So, and I went and shadowed somebody this summer. One of my neighbors, actually, he's a nurse anesthetist and his wife is a nurse practitioner. And those are the two things I'm interested in. So I'm not exactly sure which one, but we'll see. You may have the Lauren West Clinic before it's all over. Right. That's right. Why not? It, it, it might be dermatology still. A nurse practitioner could be in you, a dermatologist's office. I would you love may, that. You may have your own show on TLC before yeah. it's over with. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story behind that that I can tell you. <laughs> As we wrap this up, tell us what basketball has meant to you as far as preparing you for what's ahead in life that mm -hmm. may have nothing to do with the court. Yeah. I mean, it's really been my whole life. Like, I feel like that's all I've ever done. Every single day revolves around basketball, which is fine because I love it. And, um, you know, I'm I'm interested to see how life is once I get done because I hear a lot of athletes that are played in college when they get done, they're kind of like, oh, like, I feel like clueless and like empty a little bit without basketball. But, um you know, I've really appreciated my time and I'm looking forward to starting life and everything, but I definitely will miss like the team aspect and all the structure and everything. And that's what has taught me some amazing life lessons and how to work hard and grind things out and trust teamwork, all that type of stuff. So I'm forever grateful for all the lessons and coaches that I've had and yeah. Well, Lauren, we're grateful for your time today and, and talking with us about your life, your career. And again, correct, congratulations on that great performance on Thursday night against Thank West you. Florida. And we'll look forward to seeing you down the stretch with you. A lot of good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you so much, Mr. Beverly. I appreciate your time. And so right now, let's go back down to the floor and we'll give you the halftime statistics for today's men's game between Union and Valdosta State. And here comes your ball game blitz sports network stat line. Look at this shooting for these two teams. 64% from the field for Union, 63 for Valdosta State. Union, 8 out of 12 for 67% behind the arc. The Blazers at 43, which is considered to be quite fine, 6 out of 14. Free throws, this is where Union has struggled, 9 out of 15 for 60%. This game probably be tied if they were a little bit better inching on that. Seven out of nine for 78 percent for the Blazers. Almost dead even in rebounding, 13 to 12 with Valdosta State the edge. Union has committed six turnovers though to only three for Valdosta. And here's your big factor in that four point lead. Valdosta with nine points off turnovers to only six for Union, and that's a big big factor. So those are your halftime statistics. And we are getting ready to start this second half. Remind you, upcoming a brand new show called Lightning Strikes here on the Ball Game Blitz Sports Network with your host, Coach Joe Holloway. And it will be coming up very, very soon in which Coach will have a former University of Tennessee Vol who had a lot to do 
with a legendary fumble that made a big, big difference in leading the Volunteers to a national championship back in 1998. So premiering soon here on the Ball Game Blitz Sports Network, Lightning Strikes with Coach Joe Holloway. And now let's get ready for this one because you had about enough offense in that first half to for an entire game. And let's see if they keep it up at this point. Will both teams end up 100-plus? Jalen Johnson getting ready to toss it in, and Owens will be on the guard. And here we go. Very few turnovers in this game, only nine, and we've actually only had 14 personal fouls called. Big three. And I think that absolutely Ty Parks knew that was not getting there the minute he released it because he was already headed down trying to get a rebound that didn't come. Owens working against Parks. And the tip in goes. It was Owens on the tip, so give him nine. So Union now down by six. The key thing they don't want to have happen is what happened. And here, back behind everybody, give and go to Jalen Johnson. They don't want to have happen what happened on Thursday night against West Florida, where early on they started just falling apart and were 18 down suddenly. This game has been an even match most of the way through. And on the drive on the inside... And what a move by Fofana. That was almost a a 180 for him. Big bomb. Johnson for the three. Jalen with 13 closes it to within three. And that foul is going to be on Jalen. So for Johnson, that's his second foul. Blazers will play it underneath to reset it. Blazers are 11-7 and seven in the conference. Union 11-6. and six. Bulldogs in fifth place. Valdosta State in sixth. Both of them are fairly well assured of being in the conference tournament. The top eight go. The bank is not there. And here is a quick one. The jumper. Short. But Gidgel with the offensive board, pushes his defender aside and nails it. 12 for Gidgel. It's 61-60, got an equipment adjustment here. In other words, tying his shoe for Yvonne Prug. So Union closing it to to 61-60. Almost a steal. And Owens with the jumper. That line drive was short. Here comes Gidgel. Almost a palming. Oh, my goodness, he was close to that. It is proved. It is not there. And Union saves it. The jumper for Parks. Doesn't fall. Two opportunities missed. Bozer the rebound. If Union wins this one... And losing control of it after Eisler looked as though he had a clear ticket for an easy layup. DeBuck will slow it back up. We're approaching the 17-minute mark remaining to be played in the game. And going for the lead. No. Off the mark. And losing that, trying to go behind the back. Hamilton thought he was fouled. And for the three. Cannot get the lead no matter what. And look at how Parks saves it. He would not be denied. And the foul. Bulldogs are playing with huge intensity. Now they got to get some baskets to drop. The foul is on Rucker, and that is his third And he's the first one in any kind of serious foul trouble for Valdosta State. 
And he was most of the offense in the early going for this BSU team. I'm so old I went there when it was still Valdosta State College. We all called it BSC. It's Gidgel at the line and a chance to tie and or take the lead. Yes. Gidgel three of seven, but that gives us an all-dead game, 61 all. 57-53 at halftime. Bow for the lead. And does. And for the game, Bo has 14. Oh, I, I, I was afraid Bozer was going to go through the wall. And that's going to be a foul backside on Gidgel, his second. So we're going to the line a lot. And this one is going to send Fofana to the line. He hasn't been there so far tonight. But he's a 77% free throw shooter. And short on that first one. So a chance to knot it again. And if he does, it'll be the 11th tie in this game. That's just showing you how evenly matched this entire contest has been. And he drops it through. Neither team is really going for a lot of full-court pressure. Gidgel tried to take it all the way, and on the backside, the offensive rebound for Yordovich. And I'm wondering if something's wrong with Jeremiah Littlepage because I saw him just walking behind, and that's an offensive foul. I saw him walking behind the bench, and he was not out there to start the second half. We may not be able to find out during the course of the game, but we'll try to at least have some information on that because we haven't seen him come back. He, he took one to the thigh in that, say, about midway through the first half, and we just haven't seen him back in there. On the drive, Parks. He wasn't sure what he was going to do, but Johnson, no, short. But Parks, do they give it to him? Yes, sir. The turn and the fire, that got the bench up. And the foul is charged to Black, his second. And before the opportunity for the three-point play, we'll take a timeout. Union now into the lead, 66-62. to Stay with us. The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios. With over 750,000 views in 2022, we are where you need to advertise. Please subscribe to our Worthy Road Studios YouTube channel and join the other 4,000 subscribers watching local sports, including Union University, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, and Peabody. Our multi-camera broadcasts include slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios, the premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. Well, here we go again. Union getting off to a solid start here in this first four minutes and 15 seconds of the second half. And after trailing 57-53 at halftime, Union has gone on a 13-5 run to take a four-point lead. And that thing that you just saw with Ty Parks was an absolute thing of beauty. In the game, Ty with 13, Jalen Johnson 13, Gidgel with 14. So between those three, they have 40 of the 66 points delivered by Union this afternoon. And back we go for a three-point play for Ty. He's made both of his so far today. And connects. Tie with 14, and the Bulldogs are 12 out of 18 from the line for 67%. 
And again, a couple of subs have come in now for Coach Helfer. Fall away three. Too high off the iron and high for the rebound and almost too strong on that. Now they got a three on two. It's Parks. And Johnson for the three. New off the mark. But underneath and the follow is there on the offensive rebound for Bo Gidgel. Union now by seven, a three possession lead. And you're about to see Eisler come back in for the Blazers. Union playing with precision here to start the second half. Fall away is not there, and they're going to get the follow. Nicely done by Fofana. He's in double figures with 11. Closing it back to within five. Parks, he wanted to get a turnaround, but there was just no room there whatsoever. 14 on the shot clock. Jordovich almost loses it, and he is fouled. That's on Hamilton, and that will be his third. Rucker and Hamilton with three each, and so checking in now will be Eisler. So Union has a new 20, leading by five. Checking out of the game is Black. And let's see how Dave Niven's going to play this one. Trying to go to the inside with Gidgel. Fake, and the follow is not there. Jordovich tried to get it. They're not going to catch this one. That happened a couple of times in the first half, and nobody was going to catch up to Eisler. If he did, you were going to give him a three-point play. So Union now with only a three-point margin. They had the – there you go. And Gidgel could not get it to fall. It spun around like as the world turns, and it didn't follow. Now a chance to tie. And – thought about going for the bomb. I think he's going to be considered to be over the strike. And nice job of saving that one by Gidgel. Big bomb. No. But Jordovich. And it is Parks. Yeah, that one was way left and air ball. So Union not terribly organized on these most recent possessions, and the Blazers have just tied it at 69 all after that bomb by Hamilton. This thing looks like it's going to be 100 to 98, potentially. It's been a long time since I've seen two evenly matched teams go at it offensively like this. This is like an NBA game. Turnaround. Jumper is there for Parks. Tie with 16. He and Gidgel have the same number. Bulldogs back up by two. They may have to have 100 for somebody to win in this one. They're all over it and traveling, double-teaming the ball. And there was no way Eisler could get out of that situation. Bozer's going to come out. And coming in to give him a bit of a spell will be Rucker, who has been very, very quiet since early on. He had 12 points in the first eight minutes of this game. Union with a chance to stretch it back to a two-position lead underneath, and it was blocked and knocked away and saved. Excellent defense by the Blazers. Hamilton did a great job of keeping his balance. Boy, they are calling for it over on the side. Hamilton was wide open for a three, but he was picked up very quickly. The foul is going to be charged to Jalen Johnson, his third. And that is going to send Hamilton to the line. He's not been there tonight. Blazers 8 of 11 for the evening. Got it. And checking back in 
is Selders, Cam Selders from Morgantown, West Virginia. He's a junior. And got it. So we're tied again. In the game tonight, that is the 13th deadlock that we've had. And we still got 12 minutes remaining. Yordovich, who's been going in place of Little Page today, and we think Little Page may be shaken up to the point that he can't return. And there you go. Is it going to fall? Yes, it does. The spin for Ty Parks with 18. They're going to swing it in the middle in the paint. And the foul is going to be charged to Yordovich. That's two on him. That's the fourth team foul on the Bulldogs, and we will take a break. 11-28 remaining. Union clinging to a two-point lead. Hold on to your seats. We realize you have a busy lifestyle, and at the Bank of Jackson, we're here to help you fulfill all of your financial needs, personal and business loans, mortgages, online banking and bill pay, and so much more. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. And the president of the Bank of Jackson, Gary Grisham, and his wife are here for our festivities this afternoon. Blazers, they had the lead at halftime, 57-53. And this has been one of those that Union had a swing, Valdosta had a swing, and then Union had a swing to get up by as many as seven at 69 to 62. Now the Blazers are on a nine to four run. So this could come down to who has the ball last. So check your blood pressures, everybody, because it could be that way. But as I mentioned, Rather than this being where we're going to end up, we're we're looking at a game right now that could easily be 103 to 101. And it's not that the defense has been bad. It's just the shooting has been excellent. 57% for the Blazers, 52% for Union. And these teams have just matched it on the court. Blazers a chance to tie or take the lead. Had to hurry to get that one in. And Hamilton is going to try to set it up. They're down to seven on the shot clock. Fall away is not there, and big rebound. And trying to take it is Johnson. And the foul. And I can tell you that Selders did not like the call. He looked up as if to say, what did I do? Well, the official says you didn't have defensive position. So that sends Johnson to the free throw line. He's 5 of 7 from the stripe today, 13 points overall. Bulldogs by 3. And he gets this one. They're three quarters of the way to the century mark. This is a Union team that they have already, with 11.06 to go, they've already topped their season average of 70 points a game. Now, the Blazers, they're used to this kind of thing. They average 86. He delivers. And... 11.06 11.06 remaining, and more subs coming back in. Black is back in the contest. He's got Rucker and Hamilton with three fouls. Union Johnson with three. We're under 11 minutes to go. This has been an offensive show place tonight. Taking it right down the horn, and the foul. Excellent drive on the part of Hamilton, sacrificing himself, and Prug will be called for his third. So at the line for the three-point play, Jacoby Owens. 
He's hit double figures now. Four Blazers are in double figures. Bozer, Fofana, Owens, and Rucker. No good on that free throw. And here's Gidgel in the paint. Decides to fall away. And cannot get it to fall. The tip just did not go in the direction of the Bulldogs. And a big jumping three is there. I mean, that was hop, skip, jump, release. Black with eight. And the Blazers are back on top. 76-75, our 14th lead change. Wide open for the three. Yes! Johnson, once again, he has 18. That's his third three-pointer. Owens had it tipped, but they follow it on the inside. That is probably going to be Proog's fourth, unless they called it on Johnson. Oh, that's the fourth foul on Proog, so they're going to get Jordovich back in there very, very quickly. Ty Parks will be checking back in. Did not get much of a rest because of these two quick fouls on Proog. So he checks out. Parks and Jordovich are back in there, as we said. And I can see down here below Jeremiah Littlepage is really, I don't know if it's his ankle or what, but he is really favoring himself as he got up and tried to walk there for a second. So we probably are not going to see him for the duration. And Rucker trying to get the second of two. Does. 13 for Rucker. And he's over his season average of nine. Bulldogs with that just tenuous one-point lead. Eighteen to shoot. Now watch Gidget work one-on-one. He has so many spin moves that he could go to and tried to force it. Yep, that one just forced. Both thought he was fouled, but official says no. Trying to go for the lead once again, the Blazers. We have been up and down in that category, and that one's short. But Selder's high for the rebound. That was actually black. Underneath. And picking it up is Gidgel off the steal. Turnover number eight. The home run and the foul to break that one up. I mean, that looked like a Patrick Mahomes pass down the floor, and (laughs) it was perfect. And so it is going to be on black. That is his third, and so that sends Ty Parks to the line. Ty is perfect today from there, 18 points. He and Johnson, and 16 for Gidgel. We still got nine to go. He's got it. This to give the Bulldogs a three-point lead. Man, nine. here we are, nine minutes to go, and a chance to hit 80 already. This guy wants the ball at any time of the game, but particularly if it's on the line. Got it. He has perfect form, five for five today. But this is one of those, as we say, biggest lead for each team has been seven points. Chance of defense coming across the house from the Bulldog fans. Down to 12. There's Bozer going to try it on the inside and the foul. No, is it a foul or a timeout? It looks as though they're calling a foul, and that will put the Blazers in... The one and one. Bozer goes to the line. He's one of two today. He is their top free throw shooter at 90%. So chances are these two are going to go through. No, yes. Just got some spin off the front of the iron. At 
As we said, you figure he will deliver. 80 to 79. It's just back into tied one point, three points. It's been that way virtually this entire game. No team has been able to get a cushion. At halftime, the Blazers led it 57-53. Union won the meeting when it was down in Lowndes County. And that is an offensive foul leading with the elbow on Jordovich. Seventh turnover on the Bulldogs. And that one hurt. Blazers a chance to retake the lead off this turnover. They picked nine points off of Union's mistakes. And right there for the three. Big grin on his face. And deservedly so for Hamilton. Now he's in double figures with 11. That, my friends, was our 15th lead change. Taking it all the way down with a fake. Picks it back up. And the reverse layup will not go. Ty was just too much off balance. And the fall away drops through by Owens with that floater. He's got 13. Here goes Parks. Union's got to be careful not to let things get out of hand by not capitalizing on those last two possessions. For the three, Jordovich. No. But Gidgel, easy layup on the follow. Back to a one-point game. Bow with 18. Wide open. Nobody picked up Bozer, but he missed it, and Gidgel had it snatched right away by Black. You can't afford those things, and is it an offensive foul? It indeed is on Bozer. Some question as to whether it might have been traveling, but it's the offensive foul, and that's his first And we got timeout, 6.59 remaining. It's going to be a dandy down the stretch. Valdosta leading Union, 83-82. to Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at joneschevroletumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. All right, we're back here. 83 to 82. We have had 15 lead changes, 13 ties in this game. Nobody's had a lead of larger than seven. And uh, this has been, I think, for for what it's worth, this has been the most collective offensive outburst that we've seen for two teams together during the entire season. As I mentioned, the way the offense has been flowing for both of these teams, this is almost like watching an NBA game. Blazers, so far 56% from the floor, Union 50. Three-pointers, Blazers 8 of 21 for 38%, Union 10 of 23 for 44. And in free throws, Union 73%, (laughs) Valdosta State 72, Union the edge in rebounding. 28-27 to turnovers, Valdosta 9, Union 8. That's about as even as you could possibly have it between two teams. So Union will play it all the way back down at the opposite end with 6.59 remaining. This has been a fun game to watch because... It's not been one of those that you simply have seen a team, you know, one of those 52 to 49 type of games. This has just been one where the offenses have been clicking well. High lob, and it doesn't go. He tried to get it inside to Parks, and there were too many hands to break it up. You're taking a gamble when you got three players underneath with the capability to knock that one away, and they did. Going for the bomb. No. Too far left, but way in there, Bozer. Could not get it to fall. And Yordovich somehow comes down with it. He had double teaming all around him. Big high. No, too high. Now, I got news for you. Ty didn't have a trampoline down there, so you, you couldn't expect him to come up with that one. 
And I'm not sure that Niven was too happy with that call because, number one, the pass was not timed well. And the other part of it, I think he would have rather had just a conventional play. So it gives the Blazers another opportunity. And taking it to the inside, floater is there. That's almost unstoppable when Owens gets in that position. Back to a three-point game at 85-82. Union's tempo has slowed down somewhat. Almost stolen, and it is. And that's going to be no stop. They didn't call one on Yordovich, but Union giving it up off the turnover, and now it is danger zone time. Parks will go to the line for two, and they'll certainly take it, but Union needs some stops. You get down late in a game like this, and you suddenly find yourself down two possessions. Then you're back to climbing the ladder, as this team had to do against West Florida. And it's an interesting thing. Union beat West Florida and Valdosta State on their floors, but lost to a West Florida team on Thursday night and is now down five to Valdosta. Ties had them all today. Six for six, 21 points. He's the game leader. Checking back in for the Blazers is Fofana. Got it. Seven for seven for Ty, and timeout called by Dave Niven. 5.27 remaining. Blazers on top of the Bulldogs, 87-84. Are you looking for a Christian college or starting the college search process? I want to take a second to tell you about my school, Union University in Jackson, Tennessee. Union is a private four-year university known for its rigorous academics, Christ-centered community, and the success of its graduates. My favorite part about Union is the faculty. The professors here are so intentional about helping students grow not only academically, but also spiritually. You should check out Union for yourself. Come for a visit. I know you'll love it. At Union University, you'll be transformed. For those of you who are watching us on E Plus TV 6 or EPlusTV6.com, I'll be with you about an hour after this one is over with at 7 o'clock tonight for another edition of Steve Beverly's TV Classics as we go into the treasure trove of classic TV and bring you some of the golden oldies that you remember. It's the land of black and white where reruns are king. So join me for Steve Beverly's TV Classics 7 o'clock tonight and again tomorrow night at 7. Right now, we're looking at an instant classic, at least the way this game has panned out. Valdosta State on top by three. It has gone back and forth, as we say, 15 lead changes in this game, 13 ties. Nobody has been on top larger than seven. So the big key in this one is teams that can protect the basketball and Union, the turnovers have been almost even. Union's given it up 11 times and the Blazers 9. And back we come. We got one more media timeout. Dave Niven has two timeouts remaining. Mike Helfer has three. Blazers are going to take their time. They could go up to 90 on this possession. They're trying to screen out Yordovich. And that floater once again, this time short. And Yordovich high for the rebound. He's got four. Gidgel has 13 boards in this contest. Look at the speed down the floor. And that was a not a good decision at all to try to dish that one off to. And the foul is going to be on DeBuck. Not a good decision back at the other end of the floor. That would have been better served if he had gone on in and... Put the layup in. Or at least tried to draw a foul. And so this could be a four-point turnaround in the game. Cowboy comes back out there to get the moisture up. 4.54 to go. We're going to probably run just a little bit past our 6 o'clock time on E Plus TV 6.
off the back of the iron for Owens. He's missed both of his so far today. 65% free throw shooter on the season. But this one does not fall either. So it's still a one possession lead. Down to the 4.45 mark. One team can fall behind five, six points and a quick reach-in foul. And that is going to send, let's see who's going, it's Parks back to the line. The next foul for each team will put the other in the double bonus. For this one, Ty has got to have at least the front end of the one and one. Bulldogs 18 of 24 on the day. No. But the rebound, Yordovich, and it falls. Yordovich is there with a crucial offensive rebound. And he has gone a long time in this game without the services of Jeremiah Littlepage. Big bomb three. No, off to the right. Bulldogs a chance to retake the lead. If they do, it's our 16th lead change. Getting close to four minutes remaining. 13 to shoot. Inside, almost threw it away. They did. It was too wide for Gigel. And it went on the end line. And four minutes remain. Valdosta clinging to a one-point lead over Union. will wrap the package when we come back. The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios. With over 750,000 views in 2022, we are where you need to advertise. Please subscribe to our Worthy Road Studios YouTube channel and join the other 4,000 subscribers watching local sports, including Union University, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, and Peabody. Our multi-camera broadcasts include slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios, the premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. Well, it comes down to this. 87-86. Blazers leading the Bulldogs, but we got four minutes remaining. For all intents and purposes, it's still a brand new game. These teams have been so up and down the floor that you just got to believe they are exhausted on this, but it may come down to stamina down the stretch. Five Blazers in double figures, 16 for Bozer, 15 for Owens, 13 Rucker, 12 Hamilton, 11 for Fofana. For Union, you got three in double figures. Ty Parks with 22, Jalen Johnson, 18. Bo Gidgel has a double-double with 18 points and 15 rebounds. It could easily be in the hands of somebody who's not one of the big scorers who... Gives the deciding shot in this game. The next foul for each team will send the other one into the double bonus. That may well be a factor as well. It'll be blazer ball. And you've seen just about as much excellence of execution in this game as you could possibly see. These two teams are just so well matched. Slow tempo once again for the Blazers. They'd love to find a cutter underneath. Union staying strong in man-to-man defense, double-teaming the ball. Ten to shoot. And a head fake. And the stuff. Beautifully timed to Rucker. That's his first basket in... Boy, I mean, Yordovich took a big spill. 3.20 to go. I mean, that was thunder. Inside to Gidgel. Working one-on-one against Fofana. And his floater goes. 89-88. DeBuck picks up. Hamilton very quickly. Rucker and Hamilton playing with four fouls. Yvonne Prug is on the bench with four. 
They once again have to guard against that cutter who gets on the inside and lets one fly. Seven to shoot. Big bomb. No. But they get the offensive board. Union not fast enough on the dance there. Thought about the three. Instead goes to, and nobody picked up. Fofana. 13 points. 91-88. We got 2.13 to go. Check your pulses, everybody. Union hasn't had a three in a long time in this contest. And the reach-in foul on Fofana, and that will put Ty Parks at the line for two. 2.02 remaining. Parks on the day, 22 points. Seven of eight from the free throw line. He's done everything you could ask somebody to do in this game. This will get very quiet. 91 to 89. We will watch this one again with you once Ty tees it up. Look out. No. Off the iron. Still a one possession game at 91 89, less than two, but now every possession so critical. And trying to take it all the way inside was Owens. 14 to shoot. Fake the bomb. Seven to shoot. Big one. No, that's nowhere close. But they managed to get it home. Big one. It's a two-possession lead at 93 to 89. And the foul on the inside on Bozer. Only his second. That puts Ty Parks back in there again for two more. But they've got to have at least one of these because you've got to keep it to a one-possession game. Well, both teams have made it to 90. Union is on the short end of it at 93 to 90 with 83 seconds remaining. Parks with 24. This is an important one. Got it. Timeout called. We'll take it to one more break. Union trailing Valdosta 93 to 91. It's going to be a dandy and the finish. Buying a home is a major milestone, and at the Bank of Jackson, we want to help you achieve it. Our mortgage specialists can assist you with conventional, VA, FHA, or construction loans, as well as USDA and THDA development loans. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. This has been about as entertaining a game as you could possibly have. 15 lead changes, 13 ties, a two-point game, Valdosta on top of Union. This possession is where the Bulldogs valiantly need a stop. Mike Helfer's team has just been solid across the board today, shooting 55% from the floor. But the crucial moments are about to happen. Who can gut it out for these final 83 seconds? Dave Niven with one timeout remaining. Valdosta has three. I don't think we could put it any more plainly to you. Blazers will toss it in at the opposite end of their goal. If Union commits a foul, you put them on the line for two. A minute 15 to go and 20 to shoot. 
Fans trying to get energized for it. Long dribble. And it went to the floor. No call. Thought about the bomb. Two seconds left. They got to go. No, well short. Union the rebound. I think they virtually lost track of how much time was left on the clock. 43 seconds. Parks to the inside, and the layup will not go. In overtime. DeBuck knocked away and off the hands of Parks, and Ty knew it. Union loses the opportunity to get that emotional lift, and now it's in the hands of the Blazers. They're working against DeBuck. Thought about it. Now they go for the corner. No. High for that rebound is Parks. Tie with five rebounds. We're at 4-10 to go. The floater is short. Try that one-handed floater in the paint, and it just would not fall. Bozer wanted to go for three, but didn't. That one's kicked away, and I don't think Union can pick it up, and they say it went off the hands of Gidgel. I think Bo's trying to argue that he didn't touch it. But they're not going to come over and look at it. We're under four. No one has scored in overtime. Fourteen ties in this game. Fifteen lead changes. They got a hurry, and that's blocked. They knew it. Trying a volleyball tip was Fofana. And Union's defense... That was like a corroded battery for the Blazers. So now Union with a chance to do it. This has just been grunt and grind all the way up the floor. And these guys have got to be exhausted. Because some of them have gone virtually all the way. Parks with that stutter step. Curl high. It doesn't fall, but he will have two. I'm telling you one thing, that guy is probably going to take a couple of Tylenol and he's going to get a whirlpool or whatever he needs tonight. He has been, I mean, it's been amazing. Tied with 27 points. Every point so critical, and look how quiet it is. Yes! That was like a three-foot putt that curled around the hole. Union by two. Tie with 29. Blazers have led by as many as seven. This is Bozer trying to work the inside against Parks and does. Bozer with 18. He's the leader for Valdosta State. Under three minutes now. Each team gets an additional timeout in overtime, so Union has two. It is Johnson. Nope. And is it an over-the-back foul? Yes, it is. So Gidgel goes to the line. Let's see, is it, yeah, I believe it is Gidgel that's going to the line. And that's it for Rucker. He leaves the game with 17 points, 12 of them in the first half. But this team has a deep bench, so don't think that they're losing a huge amount because they got some guys that can rip it up from anywhere on the floor. But right now, it's some, so critical for Gidgel. Yes. Bulldogs back up 96 to 95. (laughs) 
too far off the iron. One point game. 17 lead changes. The jumper off the back of the iron and picking it up. It's Gidgel. And look at this speed merchant. 2.20 to go. Gidgel! Yes! And the foul! Gidgel with an opportunity at a three-point play. He has 23. Short. Get the offensive board. Back up. Yes! Ty Parks, 31 points. Timeout Blazers. Union 100. Valdosta 95. Now remember, we got 210 remaining. We're going to keep it right here. Woo! What a job on the offensive boards by the Bulldogs. Listen at this place. Well, just as we said, listen at this place, they quit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 100 to 95. Union with critical offensive rebounds. Let's listen at them. And the student body that chose not to come out this afternoon has missed a dilly here. Dave Niven setting his defense, and particularly one thing that he wants to do is have them to guard against a three because you've got a two-possession lead here, and emotionally the shift, if they go down the floor and pick up a big bomb, it really gives them advantage at that point. Valdosta State had a chance to win it in regulation, and it was knocked away. It was 93 all, and Union now with a 7-2 run here in overtime. Niven taking all the time that he possibly needs. He has only one timeout remaining. The Blazers have four. Blazers haven't been to the free throw line in some time. All right, let's see how Coach Helfer plays it. They're bringing Gidgel up front. The officials are talking it over. It'll be Owens to toss it in. Now Owens will retrieve it. Okay, here we go. Getting close to the two-minute mark. Clock is not moving. Clock is stalled at 2.01. Now it goes 2.01. This is about the third time today they have had a clock problem. All right, I'm looking at the other end. One clock says two minutes. The other one says 2.01. And you would know this would happen <laughs> Here in overtime. Oh, my goodness. Now they're talking it over with Carlos Spencer, the veteran clock operator. So they're going to discuss. They're going to bring it over to the other side for the Blazers to play it. All right. Here we go. Black to toss it in. 15 to shoot for Valdosta. Quickly down the floor. Nice layup by Owens. You expect him to get a drive like that. They're going to a bit of a press. Now they back off of it. As JT brings it down. And now the clock is frozen at two minutes at the other end. Inside and losing it. But retrieving it. The fall away, and now the question is, is it an offensive foul? Yeah. 
And Niven doesn't like it one bit. And the clock, again, is not in sync. And they got to come over here and try to get this sorted out. Let's sort it out, and while they try to get the clock settled, uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios. With over 750,000 views in 2022, we are where you need to advertise. Please subscribe to our Worthy Road Studios YouTube channel and join the other 4,000 subscribers watching local sports, including Union University, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, and Peabody. Our multi-camera broadcasts include slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios, the premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. Well, here we go, and now both clocks say a minute and 25 seconds remaining, and I don't think that's right. And that's what they're having a discussion about. And Coach Helfer is discussing it with one of the officials. It seems as though an awful lot of time went off on the clock, but it's saying 125. And here they go, and the clock is still not moving. Well, that's because he didn't pick it up. Well, regardless, there's a minute 20 to go and trying the same kind of ride. Open for the three. No. But there's Owens for that offensive board. Look at that spin move he had. Boy, and Bozer has it blocked by Ty Parks. He was trying to, that was actually Gidgel. He was trying to get that in timeout called by the Blazers. They got 12. We're going to keep it here. 12 on the shot clock, a minute six to go. 100 to 97. Blazers with a chance to tie this one in overtime. My goodness gracious. Let me run you scoring down on this. 18 points for Bozer, and he's had three threes in this game. 17 each for Rucker and Owens. Rucker is on the bench with five fouls. 13 for Fofana and 12 for Hamilton, who has four fouls. Over for Union, the game leader, Ty Parks, 31 points. He's 12 for 14 from the free throw line. He's added six rebounds and four assists and a blocked shot. Bo Gidgel with 23. Nine of 16 from the floor and 16 rebounds. He's had a double-double today. He's had a couple of assists, a steal, and two blocks. And then 18 points for Jalen Johnson. He's had three three three-pointers, seven of nine from the line, and he's had three assists. This is one of those that makes your heart feel like it's dropping into quicksand. Woo! This reminds me of the old days of pro wrestling when they would do 60-minute draws. And you'd have all... You'd have both guys that would get into pinfalls, and it would be one, two, and then all of a sudden the shoulder would come up. That's about the same way this one is. Let's see how they play it. Ten to go. A minute two on the game clock. They're going to have to hurry now with one. They put it up. Yes! Right at the end of the horn, it was Owens. He has 20. We are tied at 100. Well, I said this one might be 103 to 101. Here you go. One-on-one. Double team, and the bank is there for Parks. 33 points for Ty Parks. The bank is not there, and the rebound comes off to Gidgel. His 17th rebound. Union does not have to shoot, and they lose it. Oh, my, and this is going to be a wide-open one for Owens. Yes. It's 102 all with 16.7 seconds remaining. Oh, my heavens. Union didn't even have to shoot the ball and lost it. And going to the line for a three-point play. And to give the Blazers the lead, it's going to be Hamilton. 
You talk about drama, you got it right here. And Union will likely have the final possession to try to win this thing in overtime, and timeout is called. Now let's look at this. If you are Union, you naturally would say you would hope it would be in the hands of Ty Parks back down the floor because of the day that he has had. But so many times when you have overtime situations and it comes down to the final shot, it may be somebody that you least expect. Now, Jalen Johnson has had a strong day today with 18 points. You could feel good about him getting the ball and maybe trying to get an open three to win it. The thing about it is, is that Union would not have to get a three. They could win it with a two. So that opens up the bounds for just about anybody. But the key thing is protecting the basketball, which they didn't do. This game could have been theirs, and they could have just eased the game out and perhaps maybe drawn a foul. But now the Blazers have an opportunity to take the lead. And one of the five guys with double figures in this game for the Blazers is going to be on the line. And instead, it's Owens. It's not Hamilton. Owens with 22. Bulldogs have no timeouts remaining, and so Dave Niven basically set his offense in that break. Here we go. This for the lead. You knew it was coming. Owens with 23, and now the Bulldogs with the last opportunity, trailing by one. It's Gidgel. Down to eight. The crowd is counting it. Turning around. Parks has it blocked, and they're not going to get it. The clock expired, but traveling is called. So they're going to have to look back and reset this clock. Blazers think they have won the game, but I have a feeling there's going to be something in the neighborhood of 1.6 to 2 seconds left, which means you throw it in and get a prayer. 103 to 102, and the officials are going back over to look and see where the clock was whenever the ball went out of bounds or when the traveling violation was called. Now, to be candid with you, it'll be a gamble, but Niven is trying to draw up the play as to where it's going to go. Ty Parks, what a great afternoon he has had, and it was just a killer to see that shot blocked from behind. Well, once again, this has been better drama than an episode of Batman. It seems like it was six months ago that the Lady Bulldogs won 88 to 62. <laughs> All right, they've made their decision. It will be Union's ball. And they have, I hit it right, 1.6 seconds remaining. All right, Niven's making everybody certain where they're supposed to be on this. And as we do often at the free throw line, we will watch it with you. And the Blazers want timeout. You knew they were going to do that to try to ice him, and he's got three more timeouts that he can use. This is going to be a 30-second. We'll keep it right here. Again, you would think that with this kind of play and with Union only needing a two, that potentially they would toss it in to one of the guys that they could get it in underneath and at least get a quick one up. You don't have time for a dribble. That's the key thing, and I know that's what Dave Niven has told him. You don't have time for a dribble on this. You've just got to get it inside and try to get that basket in, and the fans are hoping to go home happy from here. Now it'll be interesting to see if he calls another timeout. 
And I think he's already told the official. Now he's adjusting his defense. I don't think he's going to call another timeout. He's got to hurry to get it in. The big bomb. It's blocked. That's it. Blazers win it 103 to 102. Where that ball went to Jalen Johnson would have been, that would have probably been about a 30 foot shot way outside of his range. And so, heartbreak for the Bulldog fans and thriller finish, the thrill of victory for the Blazers. It was, again, an instant classic, 103 to 102, as the Bulldogs go down to defeat in a game that had 18 ties and 19 lead changes. And going to overtime, you knew that was probably going to be it. And my director can confirm that earlier in the game I said this one could be 103 to 101, and it was close to that as Union Falls 103 to 102 in one of the real thrillers that we've had in this place in a long, long time. Well, let me run through some totals here for you before we wrap this one up tonight. Valdosta, look at this shooting, 40 of 77 for 52%. I don't know the last time I've seen a team get 40 field goals in a game, but they did. And in three-pointers, only 29, 9 of 31, but they didn't really need them, but they had it crucial down the stretch. 14 of 21 from the line for 67%. And for Union, 34 of 66 from the floor for 52%. So both teams right at 52% in shooting. Union, 10 of 24 from three-point land for 42%. And the Bulldogs were 24 of 34 for 71% from the free throw line. They had a terrific day from the line. Interestingly, only three guys went to the line. Johnson, Little Pay, pardon me, Johnson, Parks, and Gidgel. Uh, We still don't really know what the situation is with Jeremiah Littlepage, but he suffered some kind of injury in the first half because we never saw him again. He was on the bench, but we never saw him again in the second half, and it was pretty much Jordovich who took it all the way at the post. Union with the edge and rebounding, 39-36, but the Bulldogs coughed it up 16 times to 11 for Valdosta State, and... The Blazers picked up 23 points off turnovers to 15 for Union, and that was a big, big factor in this one. Uh, And ironically, the Blazers, if you look back at our stats, they led 57-53 at halftime, and, of course, we tied at the end at 93 and ending up with a 103-102 victory for Valdosta State. Let me give you the scoring, and we'll tell you who the player of the game is going to be. For Valdosta State, five guys in double figures. Amazing. 23 points for Jacoby Owens. And he was really slow to get into the scoring in the first half, but really picked it up in the second half in overtime. 23 points. He was 10 of 21 from the floor. He had 10 assists, so he had a double-double, seven rebounds as well. 17 points for Jay Rucker, and he fouled out of the game, but, boy, he was strong in the first half with 12. And then 18 points for Bozer. He ended up with four rebounds as well. And then 13 for Fofana, Mohamed Fofana, with 13 and seven rebounds. And then Hamilton with 12 points, and he had four rebounds and three assists. So distribute to those five. For Union, it was largely the three big guns and 23 points for Bo Gidgel. He was 9 of 16 from the floor. He had 17 rebounds, 23 points, 17 rebounds. He he left everything on the floor himself. Uh, It was 18 points for Jalen Johnson. That final pass to him, and the shot got blocked going for the three. And it was really one of those situations, had it gone in, if he'd been able to release it and gone in, of course, the place would have erupted. But it was a very, very long shot. They really skied that one a little bit too far outside. But Jalen had a terrific night, 7 of 9 from the free throw line. Then Ty Parks. What else can you say about him? 10 of 18 from the floor, 12 of 14 from the free throw line, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, 33 points. 
for Ty Parks. What a tremendous night that he had, and there was just no other getting around it. But we always try to give the winning player of the game from the Ball Game Blitz Sports Network to the winning team, and certainly I think you have to give that one to Jacoby Owens. 23 points, including that three-point play at the end that cinched it for the Blazers. Union had one more opportunity and could not capitalize. They actually had two shots at it and couldn't capitalize. So uh, our congratulations to Jacoby Owens and all the rest of the Valdosta State team for a tremendous gut-wrenching victory, 103 to 102. In case you just joined us, you missed that thrilling men's game, but Lady Bulldogs won 74 to 54 over Valdosta State, so they're only a half game out of the standings for first place in the Gulf South Conference after two excellent wins over West Florida and Valdosta State. Now, the teams are going to hit the road next weekend, and they'll be picking up some teams they've played earlier, and I'll tell you very, very quickly, and for those of you who listen on radio, uh, you'll be able to listen in to see them as they go down to Auburn Montgomery on Thursday night and Montevallo on Saturday. And then on Thursday of next week, uh, of the following week, they'll be right back here as they will be here in action here at Fred DeLay Gymnasium. We'll have it for you on our network. So it's about time to go. Let's give you all of the details of who made this program possible tonight. Adriana Bolin, Eric Inman, Alyssa Tatch, and Olivia Barlow on camera. Our ever-cool, ever-present director, Christopher Reasons. The game was produced by Paul Schultze and yours truly, Steve Beverly. And our executive producer of the Ball Game Blitz Sports Network is Paul Schultze. Until we're with you in 10 days, this is Steve Beverly saying so long from the great hub city of West Tennessee.